Syracuse football 86. Today's game is brought to you by the Sheridan University Inn and Conference Center, close to the action for business and pleasure. By WIXT 9, Eyewitness News, providing Central New York with its only early evening news hour. By Money Financial Services, call the Syracuse Office of Money today for your latest tax and investment strategies. By Genesis 2, Air Replacement Studios, on Taft Road, North Syracuse. Today's game is also brought to you by Bernardo Ford, your Southwest County Ford dealer. By Case Supply, for over 27 years providing Syracuse with quality kitchen and bath products. By Bill Scott Oldsmobile and GMC Trucks, the best old people in town. And by the Syracuse Herald Journal, you can depend on us. Welcome to the Carrier Dome on the campus of Syracuse University, where tonight the Orangemen will play host to the Missouri Tigers before an expected crowd of some 35,000. Hello, everyone. I'm Sean McDonough, along with Dale Dreibolcher. We're delighted to have you with us for Syracuse Football 86. The Orangemen still looking for their first win of the season. They are 0-4. They've lost their last six games. The Missouri Tigers come in at 1-2 this season. They've lost 15 of their last 17 games. So you might say there isn't much to talk about concerning this game. But Dale, as you know, talking to both coaches during the week, both Dick McPherson and Woody Woodenhofer think that a win tonight could turn the season around for their respective programs. Well, definitely. And one of the things Syracuse has got going for it or against it, depending on how you look at it, is they don't have that one under their belt yet. And I think it's very important for the Orangemen to get off the mark tonight. And uh, of course, he's got pressure at Missouri too, but uh, I think in the Dome, Syracuse might be favored tonight. If you've been watching Syracuse Football 86, you know that the big problem for the Orangemen has been one of inconsistency. But there's at least one young man on the roster who's been very consistent for Coach Dick McPherson. That's the sophomore from Jamesville, New York, Robert Drummond. Robert Drummond plays a lot, just about everywhere. Here he is as a running back. Watch him go up and over against Virginia Tech and scores a touchdown. But you don't just see him on the offensive side of the ball. You see him all over. But one of the places you see him is as a receiver, as a wide receiver. He'll be starting tonight as a split end. Here he makes a grab. Knocked out of bounds, but an important grab for Syracuse at the time. And then on the special teams, he never leaves the field. Watch this tackle. He really seems to get in on every tackle on the kickoff. And he's a hard hitter and loves to really put the pressure on. And watch this tackle right here. Watch the uh, right up around the neck. Boom. That's Robert Drummond. And if that's not enough, he also can do other things. One of them is blocked. They'll put him in as a wing back. He comes over. Nice block right there by Robert Drummond. And you're going to see a lot of him tonight, Sean. Pretty safe to say that he can do it all. For the Missouri Tigers, Syracuse isn't alone as far as injuries are concerned. The Tigers have had their own concerns in that department. One big concern this week for them at quarterback. Ronnie Cameron was doubtful early in the week with turf toe. He will play tonight. Yeah, as we were talking, he might be unfortunate for Syracuse. He's a great option quarterback. They say that he doesn't pass well, but we're talking to the SID from Missouri. They feel he can do it all. But the thing I think is going to hurt Syracuse uh, is the way he runs the ball. They have had problems stopping option quarterbacks, and this is another one in the line of great quarterbacks that they have faced this year. So Cameron is really going to be tough. And if that's not tough enough, John Clay is an uh, uh, offensive tackle. They're, they're touting for the Heisman Trophy, 6'5", 285, and he's going to be going against West Dove from Syracuse on the right-hand side of your screen. Dove's no small man, 6'6", 265. They figure Clay is probably one of the best players to come out of Missouri in a long time, so it's a great matchup right there. Two, two big guys going at each other all game. It should be really interesting to watch. Uh, I think you're going to have to give maybe the, the nod to Clay because uh, he's very, very aggressive, and uh, I've talked to other coaches and say he's legitimate. Yes, indeed, an all-big eight player of the past two seasons for the Missouri Tigers. That's going to be the big concern in this football game for Syracuse. People who have watched Syracuse Football 86 know that Syracuse has had a terrible time stopping the run. The Missouri Tigers, according to Coach Dick McPherson, have the best offensive line that the Syracuse Orangemen have played against this season. I think you're absolutely right, and, and the problem is going to be for Syracuse, again, consistency, not only defensively, but offensively. They've been up and down, so if Syracuse is going to do it tonight, we've got to look for some consistency on both sides of the football, Sean. The Orangemen, looking for their first win of the season, will return to the Carrier Dome for the opening kickoff right after this. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome, where the Syracuse Orangemen will play host tonight to the Missouri Tigers, the first meeting ever between these two schools. Syracuse has a lot of experience, however, against Big 8 schools. The Orangemen in their history have a record of 12-11-1 against Big East Conference opponents. 
They'll play in Columbia, Missouri next year. We pointed out at the top of the telecast, obviously, really a vital game for Syracuse. Got to get the first win this week. Penn State looming next on the schedule. Well, that's exactly right. And, and one of the things we also said about Missouri is at least they have one under their belt. It, it's kind of like uh, once you get started priming the pump, and Syracuse has not been able to get any water down yet. But uh, I think tonight, I think everybody has a good feeling about the game. Uh, talking to Syracuse people, I think one of the biggest things, uh, and you'll see it in a second when the captains go out, is the size of the offensive line of the University of Missouri and uh, John Clay in particular. And it is a veteran offensive line for the Missouri Tigers. Tonight they will start across the offensive line. Three seniors and two juniors. The Orangemen taking the field. They expect a good crowd tonight, and this is when you're thankful that the Carrier Dome is here in Syracuse. It is pouring rain outside, a damp and cool evening. But inside the climate control dome, approximately seven degrees, no wind to talk of, and we're certainly happy to be indoors on a night like tonight. Orangemen look pumped up, and they know, I think, this is the night. Well, I haven't seen them quite as pumped up so far this season. And if they can win the coin toss, it might be an even bigger break. Let's yeah. see what happens. The referee is John Laurie. Ahead. Okay, if my drop is to do it again, draw it here. You are. Okay, in here. Here. Both heads. It is a head. It's a head. You want to receive. All right, which end do you want to kick from? Is there one to toss? Receive. Man, so the Missouri Tigers have won the toss and they will receive to begin tonight's ball game. Coach Dick McPherson in his sixth year at the helm with the Orangemen, looking for his first victory this season. Overall at SU, a record of 25 wins, 34 losses, and one tie. Saw him before the game tonight. He said, tonight we're going to win. This is the night. He was confident, and uh, I think his team came out of the tunnel very confidently. I think they did, too. Uh, one of the things I think that you look for is that enthusiasm, and some fans have fought maybe up to this point. Maybe they haven't been as excited. Interesting sign here. Syracuse, New York, where the team wins as often as the sun shines. And just a joke, go SU, because it has not been very sunny either outside or actually in here at the Dome for Syracuse, as we said. Open for that first win, and there's uh, Dick McPherson, a heck of a nice guy, and a, a guy that you really ate for when they don't win, Sean. Yes, you'd like to see people like Dick McPherson win. Uh, he deserves to win. He represents, I think, everything that's good about college football. I recall last year when Don Nealon, the coach of the West Virginia Mountaineers, was in town. He said that college football needs more people like Dick McPherson. I think those of us like you and myself, Dale, who've had a chance to know Coach McPherson, uh, feel the same way about him. Tim Vessling will kick off for the Syracuse Orangemen, wearing number one. He'll kick off from the 35-yard line right in the middle of the field. Vessling has made it to the end zone on a number of occasions this season. Got a very strong leg out of the Rochester area. And we'll see exactly what he can do. And it would be a great help for the Syracuse defense to put Missouri on their own 20. But that's up to number one, Vessling, as he tees it up. Victor Moore, number 28. The deep back for the Missouri Tigers who come in with a record of one and two. And we are underway at the Carrier Dome as Desling puts the foot to it and drives it down to the one yard line. Victor Moore across the 20 to the 25 and he's brought down right there. That's where the Missouri Tigers will set up shop. They are led by their quarterback wearing number 15, Ronnie Cameron. He'll be joined in the starting backfield by the fullback, number 45, Ed Essen, and the halfback. A great player, Daryl Wallace. He's the main concern in the backfield for the Missouri Tigers tonight. The tight end, number 82, Joe Close. The wide receivers, number 12, Herbert Johnson. Number 88, Robert Delfino. We'll set the rest of the offense for Missouri after the first play from scrimmage. Cameron, a quarterback, a sophomore from East St. Louis, Illinois. Hands off to Daryl Wallace on the game's first play. And he is quickly stacked up. David Sapienza, number 51, in on the defensive surge for the Orange. Also number 52, Derek Ward in. And uh, that's the kind of defense that I think Syracuse has to play. They've been really storming. Sapienza has been uh, youth a little bit this year. Tim Pigeon out, the normal inside linebacker. So Sapienza is really kind of getting a, not a surprise start, but he has played, but I don't think started much now. You've got he and Ward on the inside. Eight of two on the play for Daryl Wallace. Second and eight for the Missouri Tigers from their own 27. The pitch goes to Wallace again, just a short gain, perhaps a yard out to the 28. The offensive line of which we have spoken often already for the Missouri Tigers, led by their big right tackle, the Outland Trophy and Lombardi candidate, John Clay. 
The right guard, Phil Schreiber, wearing number 70. The center, Dal Lockwood, wearing number 78. Jeff Rigman, number 60, is at left guard, and the left tackle, number 72, Ted Romney. Gain of one for Wallace. It'll be third down and seven. Delpino split out to the left. Johnson to the right. Split backs behind the quarterback, Ronnie Cameron. He drops straight back. Looking to the far sideline overthrown intended for Herbert Johnson. So the Orange defense rises to the occasion in the first series of the ball game. It's a small thing, but I think they've got some confidence. Uh, I don't think they've looked uh, that excited since the first play of one of the earlier games in the season, but they have done a good job. The Dome Ranger ever present trying to fire up the crowd. He but, liked uh, it. Good defensive stand for the Orange. Tom oh, Wilhelm. Had trouble with the snap. He's going to be brought down. He fumbled the football. The Orange has got it in. It will not be a touchdown. They'll bring it out to the 11-yard line, and Syracuse will get the ball right there. They're celebrating the touchdown, but you cannot advance the fumble, and Syracuse will get the football at the 11-yard line. Nonetheless, a very big break to start the ball game for Syracuse. I thought the ball popped out of the punter's hands, but it did hit the ground, so you're right. They cannot advance the fumble. I thought he might have picked that out of the air, but John Dominic, number 85, in there, the junior from Rome, but nonetheless, Syracuse offense will get a nice break, and the defense has done a job of causing a turnover. It was a bad snap, actually, but they were alert, got the ball, and uh, offense gets a chance to operate with great field position. Syracuse has outscored its opponents in the first quarter of the season, 24 to 19. They'll try to take the early lead against the Missouri Tigers on a big break to start the football game, and Don McPherson, number nine, the quarterback calling signals. Whistle sounds on the first play, and time might have expired on the 25-second clock. It was pretty close. As I looked up, uh, it looked like it was enough left, and it's a procedure call, so maybe they were not set trying to get the ball off before the clock went off. Not what you want right after a big break. No. Nope. Commit a penalty on your first offensive play. Take a little bit of the thunder out of you. Illegal procedure. Offense, first down. So it's first and 15 for the Orangemen from the Missouri 16-yard line. We played just more than a minute and a half here at the Carrier Dome. No score. Syracuse hosting Missouri. Back to the eye behind McPherson. Number 32, Darrell Johnson. Number 47, Harold Hayden. Again, movement in the line. I saw it this time. The right guard moved. There was some movement between he and the center. They were going to run a cross block, and there was movement. Let's see if we can pick it up on a replay. There's your right guard. That's Blake Bednar's number 79. He's only a freshman and a true freshman, Sean. He's highly recruited, was a defensive player. They've had to use him, throw him in early. Head ball, illegal procedure, offense. And you first saw down. Blake Bednar's number 79 move a little bit early. They so can still get a first down, but they are not doing themselves very much good. No, indeed. First and 20 from the 21. They can get a first down by getting to the one yard line. Robert Dunn, number 36, put out to the right, spot waiting six feet to the left. It's the option. It picks back to Harold Gaten, number 47. Can't get around the corner, and he's driven out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Gain of four on the play. Get up here. Syracuse has had problems getting outside with Gaten. Uh, this time, at least, they do not have the problems with the line. There's the pitch. A little bit early. They really took the quarterback out of it early, made him pitch early, but the pursuit is there, and they do not really have a, the ability to get outside so far this year. Gaten's got a lot of speed. They haven't been able to use it. McPherson dropping back on second down. He's going to break up the middle. He's across the 15 and down to the 11-yard line where he's brought down by number 91, Jeff Cross, the right defensive end for Missouri. The offensive line for Syracuse, Sean Garrity, number 69, is starting right tackle. Blake Bednar, 79, the right guard. Jim Leibel, 77, the starting center. John Garrett, number 56, at left guard. Craig Stopel, number 76, at left tackle. The tight end, 84, Pat Kelly. Keep your eye on the tight end. I think he was looking for him on that play. The tight end, Kelly, is 6'6", a big target, and now he's got Schwedes split off to the top of the screen. Third and 11 from the 12-yard line. McPherson straight back once again. Heavy rush, and he'll be brought down behind the line of scrimmage back at the 17-yard line. So Syracuse gets the big break, break on the problem punch for the Missouri Tigers, but they fail to capitalize, and they'll have to send the field goal team out. 
That's right. They sent uh, the cornerback. They sent seven people and uh, sent him up inside. It forced McPherson to bring the ball down early. He didn't have a chance to look. And as you said, it will now bring in the field goal team. And Vessling will kick it and commence. Second string quarterback will hold. Mike commits holding for Tim Vesling. He's three out of five this season in field goals, but both of his misses have come from outside 50. The kick is up. And it is good. Tim Vesling from 34 yards puts Syracuse on the board. And the Orangemen with 11.56 remaining in the first quarter lead 3 to nothing. Syracuse football continues after this word from your local system. Three. Tim Vesling, a 34-yard field goal that has Syracuse out in front by a score of 3-0 over the Missouri Tigers. 11.56 to play in the first quarter. Once again, it's Victor Moore, number 28, back deep for Missouri. Vesling pumped up after the field goal, drives it well into the end zone, and Moore will wisely take to one knee. The ball will be right out to the 20-yard line. That's a weapon uh, people I don't think realize, especially since they've moved it back to the 35 this year, that it's very impressive to kick the ball in the end zone this year. And I'm sure uh, Pro Scout's already looking at Vesling. He's got a couple of years left here, and he just does a great job kicking. Very strong leg, and now Missouri has no chance to run it back and has to take on the 20. Dale, the ascent Syracuse might have missed an opportunity to claim the early momentum just by getting the field goal in that situation. That had to be a lift for Missouri. I think so. I think it might have puffed him up. But on the other hand, Missouri's got to feel good about holding him the three. The Tigers operate out of the eye. The handoff to the tailback, Daryl Wallace, number 43. He's brought down after a short gain of two yards. Wallace, a junior from Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Second team all Big 8 last year in the first three games of the season for the Tigers. He has twice rushed for more than 100 yards. He really got stuck by Roger Remo, number 99, linebacker. Certainly chooses a 3-4, but lately they've been putting one of those outside linebackers, usually the strong side, right up on the line of scrimmage. So he actually becomes a fourth lineman. Syracuse along the defensive line. It's West Dove 71, John Dominic 85, and Paul Braves 94. Second and eight for Missouri. From the Tigers 22, Cameron misses it. It's a bad pitch, and Ed Essen has to cover it. Very nearly a forward pitch as well from Ronnie Cameron. Ed Essen, the fullback, a senior out of Oxford, Connecticut, very nearly came to Syracuse. Watch Terry Wood in number 90. Watch what he does right there. He's going to take Cameron. Now he forces the pitch, and... Not a very good pitch by Cameron. As you said, it was almost forward, but Wooden was coming out right now, did his job, which is to force that quarterback and make sure he doesn't get the run with it, make him pitch it. Third down and eight for the Tigers. Syracuse leading three to nothing, 10.45 to play in the first quarter. Cameron dropping straight back. Plenty of time to throw. Now he's being pressured, dumps it off the Wallace, but he's wrapped up by David Sapienza, number 51, the sophomore from Peabody, Massachusetts. Excellent pressure on the play. One thing I've noticed, watch Clay, if we see him with that left arm bandage, watch, he cannot really get up and do a good job of pass protection, and it's his man right there that comes in and puts the late pressure on the pass complete, and Sapienza makes the grab, but Clay does not look to be 100%. Schwedes gets the ball. Off the punt from Tom Wellahan, he gets blocked as he crosses the Syracuse 45-yard line. Schwedes still down. He was drilled right in front of the Syracuse bench area. Maurice Character, 57, really put the hit on him. And he kind of stood over Schwedes. And uh, Schwedes, however, is right back in where he's supposed to be. And he usually is. He bounces up pretty quickly more often than not. 175 pounds on a good day. Looking around the Carrier Dome, I'd estimate a crowd of close to 35 or 40,000 here. It's really beginning to fill in. Orangemen with good field position for their second offensive series. The handoff to Harold Gaten. Good yardage up the middle. Fumbles the football. And Syracuse recovers at the Missouri 42-yard line. That's been the big problem all season long for Harold Gaten, and it was again. But fortunately for him, John Garrett was there to make the recovery. I think it came right back to him. At least it came to an orange player. But you said it right. Watch. He really gets through the hole. There's a real good hole off the right side. Nice blocking. And there he is. He gets hit hard. And the ball bounces down. I think Gaden eventually comes up with it. Yes, but Gaden as you said, both there. it was a little scary there for him. It's a first down for Syracuse at the Missouri 42. Twin receivers out to the left. They fake the handoff to Johnson. The pitch again dropped by Gaden. It's on the ground. It's recovered by Missouri. 
at the 45-yard line. The Tigers take over. I don't know whether it was a poor pitch or whether Gaden just fumbled it. Maybe we can see on the replay. It looked like the, the timing was off on the play. They fake, he trips over Johnston, uh, McPherson does. The pitch uh, we can't see. It bounced around before Missouri. McDonald came up with it. Darren McDonald, number 55, a linebacker for Missouri, made the recovery. Syracuse leading three to nothing, 9.36 to play in the first quarter. Sean McDonough along with Gail Dreifulcher and the Missouri Tigers. Some early movement. Number 72, Ted Romney up early and they already getting into it. I'll tell you, you said at the beginning that both teams are looking for a win and they are playing inspired, maybe a little bit too inspired. I think they're both nervous, Sean. That might uh, have be an explanation for some of the fumbles and some of the problems Syracuse offensive line had and now the offensive line of Missouri. One interesting note about Clay, I want to mention again, if you see his hand, it's heavily bandaged. He's got some broken bones in the hand, and he cannot really do an adequate job of pass protection because, as you know, with the college rules, they let you get those hands out, and he's only one-handed with that respect. Ball, illegal procedure. Offense, first down. So it's been sloppy here. Early. And an inauspicious beginning for Harold Gaten. First and 15 from the Missouri 40-yard line. I formation behind the quarterback, Ronnie Cameron. Plenty of time once again, looking over the middle, finds his man, Robert Del Pino. He's across the Syracuse 40 and brought down at the 39-yard line. Jeff Mangrum in on the tackle for Syracuse. Well, Del Pino's all by himself. They had zone coverage on the outside, and he snuck down right through the middle of the zone and back of the linebackers and well in front of the safeties and had some room to run. First and 10 Missouri at the Syracuse 39 yard line. This time Cameron will keep it. He's across the 30 and run out of bounds at the 28 yard line. Interesting point there. The last time they ran that option, Syracuse came right across Wooden and they challenged the quarterback. You notice the difference in the two plays they had a bad pitch on the play that they challenged him, but watch, nobody comes up to take him. He doesn't have to pitch, and he does what he likes to do, and that is tuck the ball and run and gets a first down and is down to the Syracuse 27 and a nice run by Cameron. Wallace 43, Essen 45, the back split behind Cameron. The handoff goes to the big pullback at Essen. He crashes his way down to the 20-yard line. Essen averages more than five yards per carry for his career. This season, as a matter of fact, averaging 5.7, but he's carried the ball just nine times. I've been keeping my eye on Clay as we look at George O'Leary, the defensive line coach, sending in the signals. And I'll tell you, when he's not pass blocking and he's drive blocking, he does a heck of a job, boy, when he comes off the ball. He is a ton. Eight and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Syracuse three, Missouri nothing. But the Tigers on the move at the Syracuse 20. The pitch to Daryl Wallace. Breaks it to the outside, tries to turn the corner. He won't be able to do it. Nice play by Roger Remo, number 99 for Syracuse to get out there and stop Wallace. Roger Remo and Marcus Paul up. They've had some problems on outside contain. It's broken down, but not on that play. It looked like it might for a second, but Marcus Paul came up, and as you said, Remo, who is a linebacker, cracks him down from behind. There is Remo and Paul. Remo and Paul. Darrell Wallace down and now brings up third and short. Just about two yards to go for a Missouri. First down. They stack the backfield. They pitch it out to Wallace. Great pursuit by the Orangemen, and they stop him short of the first down. It was Terry Wooden, number 90, who strung the play out, and he got some help from the secondary as well. Chris Ingram coming up to help make the play, but Terry Wooden, really the guy who stalled that long enough for Ingram to get there and make the play. You said it right, it came from the far hash mark and Wooden strung it out, waiting for the rest of the posse to come, and that's gonna force a field goal attempt by number three, Tom Wellahan, who does it barefoot. They use that shift that Syracuse has used in the past on extra points. There's Wellahan, number three, you see the barefoot. It's a 36-yard field goal, and it's good. 
Right down the middle for Tom Wellahan, the Missouri Tigers on the board. We are tied at three with seven minutes to play in the first quarter. Syracuse football continues after this word from your local system. Three three hour score here at the Carrier Dome with seven minutes remaining in the first half. Tom Wellahan kicks off after kicking his fifth field goal of the season in six attempts. Harold Gaiden runs it back for Syracuse. He's on the move across the 30 and ridden out of bounds right there by the Tigers of Missouri. Harold Gaiden is trying at the sideline. I don't know if he's going to be in this offensive series. There's the scoring drive, 36 yards only, seven plays. Syracuse, I think, defensively, he's got to feel pleased. They held him to a field goal, could have given up a touchdown. I'm sure the coaches are looking at the positive side of things. Both teams are pretty evenly matched, I think, Sean. I would tend to agree, based on what we've seen thus far, Don McPherson calling the signals. New tail back into the game for Syracuse. And McPherson throws to the near side, complete to Robert Drummond at the 43-yard line. He's knocked out of bounds by Adrian Jones, number two. There's the man we featured at the top of the show as the do-everything special teams running back wide receiver and Rob Drummond showing what he does from a split end position. It's just a roll, good blocking along the line of scrimmage, and McPherson drops a nice pass over the linebacker and in front of Jones for a first down. Hello, Tony. Walter Mosley, number 42, now in as the tailback for the Syracuse University Orangemen, Harold Gaden, having trouble hanging on to the ball in the early going. He's on the bench right now. They give us to Johnston, the fullback, up the middle for a short gain of two yards to the 45. Johnston's been very serviceable this year. He, he's got a good yards per average, or yards per carry average, I should say. He got a lot of action early. Yeah, he's up to just about uh, under, just under five. Uh, it's slowed down a little, but he hasn't gotten the ball as much, but he's a 230-pound fullback, somebody you like to establish and make him think about inside. Second and eight for the Orangemen. We are tied at three here in the first quarter. Schwede's out to the near side. Drummond to the far side of the field. McPherson will throw. He's going deep in the direction of Robert Drummond. Just overthrown. On the coverage, Pat Ray, number 23, and he was running stride for stride with Robert Drummond. He was with him, and the ball, however, was to the inside. It would have been a fantastic catch, but the ball was thrown well. It was just too much for Drummond to go up and get it, but he did throw it to the inside, which is right, right where Robert Drummond was streaking down on the post pattern. Watch again. Good protection, once again, for McPherson, and he has a lot of time to look down the field. Watch where the ball goes, and watch where Drummond is. See that? It was a nicely thrown ball, just a little bit too much. Third down and eight for the Orangemen from their own 45. Deep drop by McPherson. Over the middle, over the head of Swades and nearly intercepted. Stan Long, number 21, had the opportunity for the pickoff, but he, I do not think, anticipated the ball coming in his direction. There was a lot of zip on it, and one of the things that McPherson's had when he's been off a little bit throwing the ball, he has a tendency to go high, Sean, which, of course, is not really good because then it stays up and in play. And kind of leaves it open for the interception, but he really put a lot of zing on it, and it was intended for Schwedes. Craig Lammers back deep to receive the kick from Jim Fox. First punt of the game for Fox, averaging 41.8 per kick this season. A high kick. Lammers with the decoy fair catch, and it bounces into the end zone. So Missouri, once again, will start from its own 20-yard line. The game tied at three, and five minutes and 53 seconds to play in the first quarter. Robert Drummond, the special teams aficionado who also made a grab just a couple seconds ago, got his pad knocked up. Don Lowe fixes him up. Syracuse defense once again, and they have been playing well. They gave up a field goal. That was a 55-yard punt, by the way, for Jim Foss, which matches his longest of the season. Of course, he would have preferred it to have been a little bit shorter and pin the Tigers deeper in their own territory. Ronnie Cameron, the quarterback. Play action, heavy rush coming, Dominic there, and they'll get him back at the 15. Wes Dove also coming in, number 71, to help out, along with John Dominic, who was the first pressure man there for the Orange. Nice job. you got to give credit, however, to those cornerbacks and safeties because they had everybody covered, Sean, and when Cameron looked downfield, he saw nothing but orange helmets by his receivers, so he had to hesitate, and the Syracuse rush up front is really looking very strong. They got in and dumped him. 
Second down, 15 for Missouri. At their own 15 yard line. This time the handoff goes to Wallace and he's wrapped up by Dominic. John Dominic has been a standout on defense here in the first quarter for Syracuse. He's a second string nose guard and as you said, he has been playing very, very well. Ted Gregory, the first string nose guard, broke his leg in the Army game and has not, will not be here for his junior season and Dominic filling in. This is having his best game so far, Sean. John Dominic, the junior from Rome, New York, out of Rome Free Academy. 6'2", 250 pounds. And you know, right now, the fans in the game, Sean, something that I have not seen much before, but they are really into it and giving that defense a lot of applause. With Missouri calling timeout, we'll pause here for our local system. Syracuse football continues after this word from your local system. Third down for Missouri. 15 yards to go for a first down. Heavy pressure. It's bad at Yes! Yes! It's 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 Deflected by West Dove and picked off by Paul Fraze. The Orangeman will take over inside the five-yard line. They dragged the tight end under number 85, Brent Peterson, but it was too much too late. As the rush was too much and Cameron saw the end too late. Watch what happens. Now Cameron's looking for Peterson, 85, not enough. See Fraze up with the interception. What a great job as West Dove, all six foot six of them got the right hand up and deflected it. And now the defense is making things happen. That's what you'd love to see when your coach Dick McPherson is when the defense makes things happen. The defensive line in particular has been much maligned this season. They're off to a fantastic start in tonight's game. The whistle stops the play. The play will not count. I think it's going to be procedure again. I think I saw some little bit of movement. Might have been the 30, 25 second clock as well. Yes, it, it was. Yep. The Orangemen can't stand prosperity here in the first quarter. They had the fumble off the punt, got the ball at the 11 yard line, backed up on two consecutive illegal procedure penalties. Dead and ball. now it's a delay of game penalty delay game. back to the 10-yard line. Delay of game against the Orange Blue Second, excuse me, first and goal, I believe. They mm -hmm. first, first and goal from the 10. Cannot get a first down, so they've got to do something with it, and they really could use that touchdown. Harold Gaiden back into the backfield for Syracuse, along with Daryl Johnston and Robert Drummond. Schwedes, the lone receiver, split out to the left. McPherson will keep it, and he'll get back to the original line of scrimmage, the five-yard line. McPherson. 4.15 to play in the first quarter. Syracuse 3, Missouri 3. They lined up in the wishbone, which I have seen them do on a number of occasions, generally short yardage. And uh, they faked the Johnson, and here's the result. McPherson cuts up inside one of the things he does so well. But uh, there was a host of Missouri people there, including Steve Vandegrift, number 32, one of the linebackers, to bring him down. Once again, we see wishbone. On second and goal from the five. McPherson. Looking into the end zone for his tight end. He won't find them, and he'll be dragged down by Adrian Jones, number two, back at the 10-yard line. He was looking for the big tight end the whole way. Six foot six. Tight end. Watch him, Pat Kelly. You'll see the low camera shot. Kelly was covered the whole way, and there's Jones comes over and puts the finishing touch and brings up a third. And last shot at a touchdown, most likely. From the eight-yard line. This time split back behind McPherson. Swadey's out to the right, drum into the left. Blitz. Throwing to the end zone. Oh. Touchdown, Scott Swadey. got him to watch the pass a real nice pass and long just could not get there i've said before you cannot cover schwady's one-on-one -on -one. with that tough touchdown reception scott schwady is now the all-time career leader at syracuse in touchdown receptions with 13 he had been tied coming into the game with mike siano tim besling nine for nine this season on extra points the kick just barely squeaks through, and the long Syracuse string is still alive. That's 162 straight PATs for Syracuse. You can correct that score. It's 10-3 Syracuse.
Syracuse football continues after this word from your local system. Tim Vesling has just converted Syracuse University's 162nd consecutive PAT. Dates back to 1978, that string. His kickoff not quite as deep as the last, and Victor Moore, number 28, takes it from the goal line. He won't reach the 20. The Syracuse special teams stop him at the 18-yard line. We talked about consistency at the top of the show. The offense <laughs> hasn't really shown much consistency, but the defense really gave him the ball right where they needed it. And as you said, Sean, that was a very important touchdown, I think, for their confidence. And uh, Schwede is very, very tough to cover one-on-one -on -one down there, and that gives them a 10-3, something out a significant lead. But for Syracuse, I think it's a real confidence. Right. I don't think you could get two turnovers inside the 15-yard line and come away with two field goals and get much confidence out That's of that. Right. That was really almost a must-touchdown situation. And the Orangemen converted on third and eight on the eight-yard touchdown pass to first into Schwede. Darrell Wallace has not been able to find much open ground thus far. Tries to turn the corner and is driven out of bounds by Chris Ingram, number 24. 24 Darrell Wallace last year, 1,120 yards, only the third rusher in Missouri history to rush for more than 1,000 yards in a season. He's got good speed. He tried to make it up to the outside, and he did turn the corner. But Syracuse strung it out pretty well, but the number 29 dragging his shoulder. Cooper Gardner. Gain of seven, second and a long three. The handoff to Ed Essen, number 45. He is popped, but managed to surge forward for a couple of extra yards, and he'll be very close to a Missouri first down. Sapienza and Ward, the two inside linebackers, are really doing some crunching. And David and Essen really took a shot. Here's the line. And you get a look at this. Watch the hit. Mm. Boom. Right there. I mean, Ward really unloads on him. Third. Essen and dropped the football there. Yes, he did. I didn't see it, but the replay showed it. Third, Third and, and one. Very short. Full house backfield for Missouri. They pitch it out to Wallace. Uh -oh. And he drilled by head at Sapienza. A loss on the play as they drop him at the 26-yard line. Woo! Missouri once again will be forced to punt. Watch Sapienza. What a smack. Here's the pitch. There's Wallace. Watch. Surging forward and right there. He just he took his feet right out from under him. Looked like he stepped in a landmine. Well, a hand again to punt. Heavy rush. He just barely gets it off. And it's Beautiful. a good kick. A booming spiral driving Swades back to the 23. Up the sideline to the 35 and out of bounds right there. That's where the Orangemen will set up shock first and 10 with a minute 37 to play in the first quarter. And the Orangemen leading the Tigers 10 to 3. Returned by Scott Clay. Look at Sapienza. He's only a sophomore out of Peabody, Mass. One of the Boston area players. 6'1", 225 pounds. And they held Missouri. And right now we'll have the offense get a chance to come back. See if they can do the job. 51-yard punt for Wellahan, a 13-yard return for Scott Schwedes. Syracuse leading 10-3 on offense now. Take the handoff, the throw to Schwedes, complete. He's to the 45-yard line and very close to a Syracuse first down. It's fun to watch Schwedes after he gets the ball. He does a nice little curl, comes back, throws a couple of moves, and he really has got great speed. To the pros like him. They don't know about his size, but they sure know about his ability. Watch that. Watch the turnout. Great play by Schwedes. Puts his head down because Long was head hunting. Joran's just short of the first down. Perhaps a down situation here with second and inches to try something elaborate. It's a handoff to the fullback Johnston, and he's across the 45. He has the first down at the 47. You know, one of the things I think some of the fans, uh, they always say that, you know, it's second and short. I think what Syracuse needs, and you're absolutely right, in a, perhaps another situation, but right now they're looking for consistency. They went to right. the big fullback. Let's get the first down, and let's get right down the field because they've had their problems so far today, but they're looking right now, I think, pretty good, and they've got to feel very confident. On the other hand, Missouri's defense, which has given them trouble all year, is going to be on the field for a while. First and 10, Syracuse with 40 seconds to play in the first quarter. A fake handoff to Johnson, the pitch to Gaten. He's across midfield and brought down at the Missouri 49-yard line. Terry Walker, number 40, on the tackle for Missouri. Missouri essentially using a 4-4-3. 
it looks like. And they are a team that likes to, has blitzed on occasion. They said they've gotten burned on it, but they've had problems with linebackers. The thing about the super great linebackers are the speed, and they don't feel they have the speed to do a lot with them, so they try to blitz them. This will be the final play of the quarter. If they get it off, one second left, and that's it. They will not get another play off here in the first quarter. So an exciting first quarter of play here at the Carrier Dome, and the Syracuse University Orangemen lead the Missouri Tigers by a score of 10-3. to 3. This is Syracuse Football 86. Ten three hour score at the end of one quarter of play. The Syracuse University Orangemen leading the Missouri Tigers here at the Carrier Dome. Big crowd on hand tonight. Certainly appears to be the largest of the season thus far here at home. Gaten for a couple as he Darryl dashes Gaten along the hash mark. First by number 40, Terry Walker. Ran a little cutback. Didn't get off that left side what he wanted and only picked up a couple cross 91 was there and byron abraham comes in at tailback and replaces gaden third down and four for the orangemen abraham's a good pass receiver sean he's also a good man to get on a screen mcpherson dumps it out to abraham abraham has the first down and much more He's down to the 30-yard line of Missouri. And, and a penalty hit. flag goes down. Absolutely right. He was down when Jeff Cross landed on him. But as I said just before the play, that Abraham is a, quite a receiver. And McPherson sets it up, looks right, drops the ball off left. And Abraham makes a nice move right there. There's the move. And there's the late hit. So that makes it. Doubly nice. Yes, it'll be a 15-yard walk-off against the Tigers. That'll put the ball down at the 15-yard line. First and 10 for Syracuse there. Byron Abraham with his 10th catch of the season. He's second now in receiving for the Orangemen behind Scott Schwede, who has 20 receptions with his two tonight. One of those, an eight-yard touchdown pass, which made Scott Schwede the all-time career leader in touchdown receptions at Syracuse University with 13 one more than Mike Ciano. Just underway in the second quarter. Syracuse leading 10 to three. Time to add to that lead, first and 10 from the 15. The option, McPherson will keep it, and he's down to the 11-yard line. Wrapped up there by Stan Long, number 21, the weak safety, a sophomore from Berkeley, Missouri. And Garrett gets out and leads a nice block as they got about five on that watch the pull there's the pull sees the first white jersey cuts off the pursuit and then mcpherson does what you're supposed to turn up field get north and south and pick up as much as you can 13 32 left in this second period and second down and six for the orangeman from the right hash mark gaden goes in motion Handoff goes to Daryl Johnston. He has a first down as he pulls his way down to the three-yard line. Johnston, the big pullback, 230-pounder. Watch the move. Just a straight handoff. Great blocking at the point of attack. 56, John Garrett up really made a nice block again. And the offensive line is starting out to be uh, kind of a plus for the Syracuse Orangemen. It has been this game. They spot the ball back at the four where it's first and goal for the Orangemen. The person quieted the crowd. The handoff to Harold Gaten. Touchdown, Syracuse! from four yards out makes it 16 to three lined up in the wishbone he just turns around and gives it to harold gaden who lined up as the left halfback great blocking off the left hand side kind of a delay and gaden pounded through there he gets congratulations from coach mcpherson and he's getting some confidence too sean because he fumbled earlier in the game and max stuck with him gave him a chance now he scored a touchdown Nestle makes it 163 consecutive extra points for the orangemen 
17 to 3 is our score. Syracuse leading Missouri. We'll return to the Carrier Dome after this. Syracuse leading 17 to 3. 1257 remaining in the second quarter. Another high kick from Vesling to the goal line. Victor Moore on the return. Again, he won't reach the 20. He is stopped at the 17-yard line. Great special teams work once again. Guess who's on the bottom? That's Robert right. Drummond. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't much of a guess. Number 36 out of Jamesville, New York. Plays pretty similar, 21 to 17 in total number of plays so far, but time of possession, I have to say Syracuse is really uh, giving their defense a chance to get a break. 65 yards, eight plays. That's a nice kind of scoring drive. Something you'd like to see as a coach that shows you got consistency. Ronnie Cameron, the quarterback. The option. Great job by Wooden. And a great job by Cameron to keep his balance and cross the 20 and make his way out to the 23-yard line, perhaps the 24. That's Cameron the kind of a little slow getting up. I was going to say, that's the kind of athlete he is, Sean. He's the kind of guy that when Wooden broke through there, took his legs out from under him, he kept right on going, picked up good yardage. Watch number 90, Wooden, will break through right there. Watch what happens. Down, but not the knee. And Cameron does a super job of scrambling for about seven yards. He's got 13 yards. Excuse me, Cameron's got 13 yards on three carries. Second down and three for the Tigers. The handoff to Daryl Wallace. He has his biggest gain of the football game thus far. As he makes his way to the 34-yard line. Wallace showing good speed. And a good first down for Missouri as Wallace ripped right through a good hole on the right side. He's got 24 yards now on 10 carries. Not an impressive average, and obviously that his longest game, but he can do the job. Last year against Kansas State, for example, Wallace rushed for 224 yards. <laughs> Auction, Cameron keeps it. Again, David Sapienza in on the hit. West Dove at the bottom of the pile, number 71 for Syracuse. Along with Terry Wooden, and let's give him credit, he's played outstanding football here in the first half for Syracuse. I'd also say that West Dove in the matchup, uh, we have not been calling Clay's number, you know, and one of the things they mentioned is that they run over Clay a whole lot. They have not been running over him all that much tonight. We'll see if we can pick up later in the game a little ice saw and see how Mr. Dove and Mr. Clay are doing. Second and seven from the Missouri 36-yard line. Syracuse leading 17 to three. Quick pass, it's complete to Robert Del Pino. He's across midfield and down at the Syracuse 48. Marcus Paul, number 10, made the tackle. Del Pino, a good weapon, got himself open. The ball was delivered by Cameron, right on the money. I would say definitely uh, 40,000 here at the Carrier Dome tonight as we pan the crowd. We're very close to it. First and 10 Tigers. The handoff to Daryl Wallace. He stopped at the 44 yard line after a gain of four. I watched play on that play. He got a good block, but you know what's happening? The linebackers are very active, and, and even though they're getting to like Dove, that let, he's taking up two blockers, and that lets the linebackers get out and make the plays. Got a man Please down from Missouri. I believe it's Robert Del Pino, number 88, according to the Missouri coaches. It is Del Pino. According to the coaches, he's a uh, great blocker out there. Maybe the best blocker they've had at wide receiver in quite some time. Played at Dodge City Community College last year in Dodge City, Kansas. He is in a lot of pain, and he has been very successful in catching the ball tonight. Uh, second catch just before this play, and he is in a lot of pain. Perhaps the left knee or ankle, the way they are flexing his left leg. Might be able to see what happened to Del Pino. He'll be number 88. This is the replay of the run. Oh, there he goes now. down. And kicked on his way down again, but that was not the injury. It was to his left leg, and he'll hobble off under the attention of the Missouri training staff. Not good news for the Tiger offense, already trailing 17 to 3 with 10.36 to play in the second quarter. Into Syracuse territory, and they're going to take their time getting Del Pino off. 
trying crowd. to get the wave going yeah. down below us. Here. Trying to get the crowd in the game. And I think that's something that would really pick up the Orange defense. They have been playing very well. They need a big play now. In this series, as Missouri heads into Syracuse territory. Second and six for Missouri at the Syracuse 44. Cameron, the option. Runs into his own blocker, Craig Lammers, and then gets lambasted by Marcus Paul, number 10. But it was number seven, Craig Lammers, that really helped to jam up that play for the Syracuse defense. That's the kind of aggressiveness you really like to see out of Marcus Paul. Here's a block in front. What do you do? Well, you smash through him and get to the guy in back of him. And that's exactly what he did. And before, I haven't seen that recklessness. This is really a, a kind of a different orange defense tonight. They're playing very, very tough. Third down and three for Missouri. They have not converted one yet. Out of the eye, Cameron rolls to his right, looking in the direction of Victor Moore. He has him. It's a completion, and he's out of bounds at the 32. Victor Moore had hip surgery last year, and he was injured in the Iowa State game a year ago, but he's back in action, and he has the first down. Let's watch Clay. See if he gets, there's that one arm. He can't get his left arm up. They rolled that way. Watch Ingram. Ingram really did a pretty nice job, but it was a well-thrown ball by Cameron. He put it right where it had to be for a first down, and Missouri continues on into Syracuse territory ever deeper. Sean McDonough with Dale Dreikulcher. Hope you're enjoying Syracuse Football 86 from the Carrier Dome. Ed Essen, the fullback, up the middle for a gain of two yards. Across the 30-yard line. Syracuse proving very tough to run on up inside tonight. John Dominic. And Derek Dominic, Ward. one of the reasons, along with those linebackers, very Ward. active, Sapienza and Ward, as the line. down three have been really occupying that front offensive line. Second and about seven. Cameron, a quick pitch to Wallace. Chris Ingram up to make the play. He shed the block of the tight end, number 85, Brent Peterson, and wrapped up Wallace behind the line of scrimmage. Ingram does a great job. First of all, looks like he's just going to be able to turn it back in. He's got the outside contained. Watch him come up. There's Wooden and Ward. Watch Ingram. Got off of the block. Number 85, Brent Peterson tried to hook him. Couldn't do it. Ingram not only beat the block, he made the tackle. Great job. Third down for the Missouri Tigers. They are within the field goal range of Wellahan, his longest of his career, 54 yards. Cameron rolling. He's going to keep it. He's across the 30 and down at the 28, well short of a first down. They West, move things in a little bit closer for Wellahan. West Dove out off of play, got there along with Roger Remo, who has really been very active tonight from that outside linebacker spot, but is playing up on the line of scrimmage, and they are sending those outside people right in on Cameron, dragged him down, chased him out of the pocket, but as you said, close enough to give Wellahan a little closer shot from the 35 to make it a 45-yard effort. He's one for two from between 40 and 49 yards this season. His kick is long enough, and it is good. Tom Wellahan with his second field goal. He's provided all the Missouri points. 7.27 to play in the second quarter. Syracuse leading 17 to 6. Syracuse football continues after this word from your local system. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome where Tom Wellahan has narrowed the margin to 17 to 6. He has just kicked off through the end zone. Those kickers are always a little bit more pumped up after a long field goal of 45 yards. 17-6 the score. Wellahan doing all the scoring for Missouri. Syracuse offense shown consistency on the last drive, and they'd like to see some more. They got 7-27, as you mentioned, Sean. Lots of time. Ball starting right on their own 20. I formation behind Don McPherson. The pitch goes to Walter Mosley, number 42. And he'll be dragged down for little or no gain, just across the 20. 
There's the scoring drive, 62 yards in 11 plays. Wellahan on a 45-yard field goal. A nice drive by Missouri. Couldn't push it across for the touchdown, however. Mosley's going to check out. Highly recruited, little used so far in his career at Syracuse. Byron Abraham into the lineup, number 33, to replace Mosley for Syracuse. The Orange faced with second and nine for their own 21. McPherson rolling left. Looking deep up the field. He'll cut back to his right. Heavy pressure coming. He gets it away. It's complete. Pat Davis. And he's out of bounds after getting a Syracuse first down at the 35-yard line. There you see the athleticism of Don McPherson just about as well as it can be exemplified. And you know what else? How about the tight end who runs a pattern, looks around, and the quarterback's not where he's supposed to be. Heads up play by Davis, because watch, he wasn't going, oops, now he goes back. Now what's Davis doing? Well, Davis is trying to get open, and he did a great job of getting open as they picked up 14 yards, and there's the pass. But as I said, Davis just had to keep his concentration level very high also. Thought I saw a clip there, but it went undetected. 6.37 to play in the second quarter. Syracuse leading 17 to 6. McPherson will keep it, and he'll get two. McPherson to about the 38-yard line. Trying to get away from McPherson carrying the ball as much as he's been the leading ground gainer. And in terms of attempts, he's been the leading ball carrier. So it's a uh, it's very, very tough situation. You'd like to see a good quarterback run, but not quite as much as he does. McPherson came into the game with 77 carries for 298 yards. That's a 3.9 average. He's carried four times tonight for nine yards. Takes the handoff, looking to throw, almost lost his balance, goes deep downfield, it's incomplete. Intended for Robert Drummond. But I think the ball was underthrown because McPherson lost his balance behind the line of scrimmage. His knee almost went down, watch. He kind of runs into Johnston, never gets up. There he goes down, come back, he slips. And he really had a lot of pressure on him. He just got the ball off. McMillan, 96 there, to help break it up. Eric McMillan, one of the defensive co-captains from Missouri, a junior from Silver Spring, Maryland. Important third down here. Syracuse would like to keep this drive going. Less than six minutes to play now in the first half. Back split behind McPherson. He's looking deep again. He's going deep in the direction of Scott Schwedings. The ball is on the road. Contact, and it's picked off. Charles Murphy cannot get up and advance it, but Charles Murphy, number 83, has the interception. The freshman from Hollywood, Florida, gives the ball back to the Missouri Tigers. Looks like we went up in the air that he got hit. And, you know, <laughs> I think you can tell that Scott Schwedings was not pleased. Perhaps they felt that uh, they were going for the ball. We'll see on the replay from the end zone level. And he really airs this one out and hangs it up there. And Schwedings is running underneath it. Close one. Contact. Yeah, it looked like it to Tough. me. Perhaps they decided he was going for the ball. And the ball was underthrown. At any rate, person. there's not much anybody can do about it. Syracuse defense back on the field. And they have been causing some problems for Missouri. Daryl Wallace puts his Ooh. head down, gets very little. Perhaps a yard. Roger Remo again. Very active linebacker. Went to the University of Indiana, was a quarterback, transferred to Syracuse, put on 40 pounds, moved him to the outside. He is a moose and is doing a good job tonight. 520 to play in the first half. Syracuse leading Missouri 17 to 6. Second down and nine for the Tigers at their own 20. The pitch again to Daryl Wallace. Again, a very short game. Wallace lost his helmet as he was taken down at the 22-yard line. Man down for Syracuse. Derek Ward. Derek Ward, number 52. The Mangrum did a nice job of containing that play. Watch Mangrum come up on the outside. There's the, there's the toss. And up comes Ingram and waits for Ward to come over. Ward kind of reminds me of Jimmy Brown. He's a defensive Jimmy Brown. He's up slow every play. He'll be out for one play and he'll be back in, I'm sure. He's a tough kid. There the comes the wave now, by the yeah, way. They got the wave going. More importantly, it's third down and seven for the Missouri Tigers. Cameron.
going deep, and it is incomplete. Intended for Herbert Johnson, number 12. And the ball slightly overthrown by Ronnie Cameron. Plus, Kirk is the nickelback, five defensive backs, and uh, it was like he was catching the bus just a little bit late. Does Bus Kirk get over there? Watch what happens. Bus Kirk won't even be in the picture yet. There he comes. Just good timing. Wellahan in for the punt. Another good kick by Wellahan. Very good kick, driving Swades back to the 30. Started to his left, cuts back to the right. Tigers there waiting for him. And Maury's character, number 57, takes him down at the 36-yard line. A return of six yards on the punt for Scott Swades. Character very, very active on that special teams for Missouri. So the Syracuse defense, again, forces a punt, playing very, very well. And they're going to have the ball with 4.22 left. 48-yard punt for Wellahan. And a six-yard return by Schwedes. 4.22 to play in the first quarter. The wave uh, attempted again here, and this time it seems to be in effect for the fans. McPherson throwing and completing the pass. Out to the 43-yard line, the tight end Pat Kelly on the reception, the junior from Webster, New York. I like this guy. He's a, he's a prototype tight end at 6'6", 240. He's got good hands. There's the wave. And when this <laughs> place gets rocking, you can really hear it down there. I'll tell you one thing, too, Sean. You get a lot of people here. It gets hot. And, it is uh, hot. It's warm down on that field, I can tell you right now. A lot of enthusiasm as Syracuse with 348 trying to get some more points on the board. Leading 17 to 6. Up the middle go the orange. Daryl Johnston for a short game. It'll be third down and one at the 45. It's a long one yard. McPherson quieting the wave. I think the wave is meant to be a defensive cheer to rattle the other team when they're on offense. McPherson pitches it. There's nobody there. He pitched it and there was nobody there. It's recovered by the Missouri Tigers. Gary Justice on the recovery, number 94. Missouri takes over at the Syracuse, 32. An obvious mix-up there because there was no one there. The pitch just went, and I was looking for somebody, and I had the glasses on, could not see who was supposed to be there. Obviously, I, everyone went the right way. It must have been the back made a mistake. I don't think that he would have fixed it to no one, but the pressure now back on the Syracuse defense, and they've got to just get tough because this has been a, a pattern they've had to do and they've risen to the occasion tonight they got three minutes left to hold Missouri out of the end zone first and ten Tigers motion to the line John Clay the Outland Trophy candidate seemed to be moving ahead of the play the big right tackle wearing number 77 it's been a game of uh, those kind of momentum shifts right after a team gets a turnover. They commit a five-yard penalty on the first play. That's right. They say thanks a lot. And then maybe a little bit over-eager. They do not capitalize on it. At least not Donnie. In terms of concentration, there's Don McPherson. He had to wonder, hey, there was Ten ball. somebody there. Any procedure. Offense, first down. John Laurie, the referee tonight. When McPherson came over to the sideline, he was talking with Robert Drummond. I don't know if that's where the mix-up was, but Coach McPherson also talking to Robert Drummond. Out of the eye formation, the Missouri Tigers first and 15. Cameron going long. Incomplete. Intended for Herbert Johnson, but he was out of bounds. Good coverage. Marcus Paul right there as he saw Johnson. Knew the ball would be out of bounds by the time it got there. Good protection for Cameron. John Dominic in late. Oh, there's the ball. Watch Johnson. And he didn't even have a chance. His first foot in bounds. Uh, excuse me, his first foot step was a full three feet out of bounds. Cameron now 4-4-7 four, for four, 53 yards here in the first half. Syracuse leading 17-6 to six with 2.53 to play in the first half. Cameron will keep it. And he'll be brought down at the 31-yard line. Marcus Paul on the tackle. David Sapienza also in the area, number 51. 
I can't get over what a good job Syracuse is doing of defending the option. They are really taking care of the pitch man. Watch what happens as they get the ball way outside. Watch Mangrum. Now Mangrum's way out up on top. There he stays with the pitch man. There's the pursuit that they've had problems with before. Stayed right there, third and long. Third and nine yards to go for a Missouri first down. Cameron chased out of the pocket. He'll get the first down. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15 at the 12-yard line. Once again, you see the athletic ability of Cameron as he really had nothing else to do. They really had him covered, but somebody has got to be playing back there and got to be heads up on Cameron. Watch Cameron. Maybe a little bit over pursuit. He cuts back, and there's no coverage out there to keep him in. That's very, very tough to do, but you know when you're playing a guy like Cameron, you better have somebody there. That's right. That's the difference between Cameron and the backup, Jeff Henningsen. Cameron gives them that run dimension. He's now rushed for 47 yards. He's the leading rusher. The handoff to Daryl Wallace. He'll get very little, if not nothing. Pete Ewald, number 26, in there on the play for Syracuse, the senior from Peru, New York. If Syracuse can hold them to a field goal attempt with uh, 145 left in this half, it would be a great moral victory because uh, that pitch, I thought, could have really deflated them, but they've got a lot of time left, and Syracuse has got to do some more forcing on defense, second and about nine and a half. You saw the score. There's a minute 30 to play. And Missouri uses its second timeout of the first half. Cameron wants to talk it over with Coach Woody Wittenhofer and his coaching staff. Syracuse football continues after this word from your local system. Big play here, second and nine for the Missouri Tigers. Cameron sprinting out to his right. Being pursued and being dragged down by Terry Wooden. Number 90, Terry Wooden, the red shirt freshman from Farmington, Connecticut, who's playing Number an exceptional 90, game on defense. defense. We just got done talking about how well they've been defending the option, and they got a bunch of people into this one. And Wooden, who has just been playing an outstanding game, watch Wooden 90, neutralizes the block of the tight end, Murphy, and just chases him down, and you got to give the backs. Mangrum, nice job of stringing it out. Syracuse defense looking tough. We got 103 left, and there's going to be a time. Missouri has called timeout. Cameron again wanting to go over and speak with his head coach, Woody Wittenhofer. Woody, the man in the middle of your picture wearing the headset. In his second year at Missouri, suffered through a tough first season as the head coach at his alma mater. Went 1 in 10 last year. So, Syracuse fans who are disappointed about the 0-4 start this year can at least take solace in the fact that Syracuse had seven wins a year ago and went to a bowl game. The Missouri people had to suffer through a 1-10 season. They're 1-2 thus far this season. Got something super coming up. Penn State-Syracuse, always an excellent game. Penn State off to their usual start. Beat Rutgers and a foe of Syracuse. Obviously, one of the toughest teams, if not the toughest, year in and year out on the Syracuse schedule. We should point out that Check is in two weeks. Listings. Two weeks, Syracuse off next week. That's right. They got a break. And hopefully, they'll have two weeks to savor a victory if you're our Syracuse fan. Right now, the Orangemen leading 17-6. to six. With a minute three to play. The big crowd here at the Dome spurring on the defense. Rolling pocket. The pass oh! is complete, but for a very short game. Wallace made the reception, but he was brought down immediately. Once again, it was Terry Wooden making the play. Absolutely. You watch Wooden. He was not fooled at all. All the motion went away. They're going to throw back, and Wooden stayed home. Watch the motion. Here it is left. Here it is, hoping to sucker somebody into overcommitting, and watch Wooden. Stayed right home, and he dropped number 43 right where he stood, Daryl Wallace. Now we're going to get another field goal attempt by Wellahan. He's two for two tonight. Six for seven on the season. This kick is also good. A field goal of 25 yards for Tom Wellahan. And with 20 seconds remaining in the first half, the Syracuse lead now eight points at 17 to nine. Well, as I said, one of the things that the defense had not been able to do before was 
hold teams to field goals and see the touchdowns. They've done it three times tonight, and they've done it under adverse conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, a pitch to nobody, and uh, they gave the ball. They came right in, did not lose their composure, and I think it's a real credit to incidentally how well they've been uh, playing the option. They've been doing a great job. They've been working on it. They've played option teams all this year, and they had problems early. They seem to have gotten an act as they have held Cameron on the run to not much. He's been passing pretty well. And Wallace as well, the big threat, has That's carried right. the ball a bunch but hasn't been able to explode. As a matter of fact, 15 carries for Wallace and just 22 yards. Under two yards of carry. When you're doing that to Wallace, uh, second team all big eight, you're doing a good job. And there's Drummond. Now he's got uh, triple duty. He's back as a receiver with Gaiden. They've got 20 seconds. They want to make sure now that they don't make a mistake. Mr. Gaiden wants to hold on to this football. Tom Wellahan to kick it off. He is a junior from Carrollton, Texas. Spinning kick, bouncing at the five, hopping high in the air. It will be down by Gaiden. I'd imagine it'll be uh, one play, drop to the knee, and we'll have halftime here with 20 seconds remaining in the first half. Wellahan has really done a nice job of kicking the ball, and well, that one went into the end zone, but it wasn't your classic end over end. He really has got a strong, strong leg. Talk about the nationwide recruiting. One of the things they talked about in Missouri was a little late getting on that bandwagon. He's from Texas. I'm sure they're trying to make up for lost time. It, it's apparent you can no longer just recruit from your state and hope to compete mm -hmm. with the level of competition, especially in the Big Eight. The Orange do indeed fall on the football. And that should be the final play of the first half. Clock ticking with 10 seconds remaining. Syracuse will head to the locker room with a 17-9 lead. It has not always been an artistic success for Syracuse. But when you're going four, you have to be very happy with any kind of a lead at the halftime. And right now, that lead is 17-9. We'll be back at the Carrier Dome right after we pause for this. Set to go in the second half, Tom Wellahan kicks off for the Missouri Tigers. Syracuse leading 17-9 with 30 minutes left to play. Harold Gaden with some running room across the 30 and brought down at the 31-yard line. Rodney Shepard, number 18, made the tackle. Gaden got a big hole, showed good speed, got up through the hole. Not able to go any further, but a good field position for Syracuse. Man down, Sapienza, who has had a tremendous first half playing linebacker is holding on to his ankle down low the trainer out there quickly to check out Sapienza. Syracuse not particularly much depth in the linebacker no. spot. They've lost Tim Pigeon earlier in the season and they're getting right down there. And they check the ankle. I believe it's his left ankle. David Sapienza, sophomore from Peabody, Massachusetts. Has played a big ball game in the first half for Syracuse. He and Derek Ward on that inside linebacker spot did a nice job, and they've both hit very, very hard, and he's getting a little bit more limber each step he takes, but Syracuse offense gets a shot now. Jackie Stuhlman, please report to the management office. Jackie Stuhlman to the management office, please. First and ten, Syracuse. Syracuse with its first possession of the second half. Beginning at the 32-yard line, Robert Drummond, number 36, in motion. McPherson on the delay to Gaten. That'll lose a yard as he is dragged down behind the line of scrimmage. Darling, number 58, up. the defensive Darling. lineman, and Daryl Darling was not fooled on that delay. Syracuse now a little bit of a hole, second and 11. Daryl Darling wearing number 58, the nose tackle, a sophomore from Hallandale, Florida. The strongest Tiger bench presses 500 pounds. Out of the I formation, second and 11. McPherson with the keeper and very little running room. He gets a yard back to the original line of scrimmage. Missouri putting some people in the gaps. I think they're trying to confuse the Syracuse blocking scheme. Syracuse's offensive line, I thought, did a pretty good job in that first half. But Missouri trying to cross them up a little bit and not give them the same look all the time doing some shifting, putting some people in some gaps. They pulled Bednars out, but they closed down early. This is a big third down now for Syracuse. They want to get some momentum in this second half. 
Third and 11 for the Orangemen. Obvious passing situation. McPherson straight back. Over the middle, complete to Gaden. He'll be short of the first down as he is tackled at the 39-yard line. Injured player down on the field for Missouri. Tackled by number 23. Number 48 down for Missouri. That's Cameron Riley. This is a little over the middle. Syracuse has not gone to the backs that much. This is not a surprising call, but it might be for Syracuse that, as we said, they have not gone to the backs other than number 33 when he's in there. That's number That's Abraham, but Wiley is down. I think he got maybe tangled up with a helmet. He got Gaten. hit by uh, Gaden. He also got hit by one of his own men from behind who was coming in to help out with the tackle. Cameron Riley, a senior from Metropolis, Illinois. Formerly a tailback for the Missouri Tigers. As a matter of fact, he was their third leading rusher back in 1983. As you notice, we talked about the nose guard from Hallandale, Florida. We've mentioned before uh, a lot of people doing recruiting all over the country. Well, we got a chance. You might look at some of those stats we had at the end of the half. Syracuse, actually not as many total yards, 102 to 125. But, of course, they were able to pick up on some key turnovers mm -hmm. and some defensive uh, forcing that intercepted uh, pass by the defense. Uh, turnovers, however, have hurt Syracuse that last pitch to nobody there that we saw at the end of the, here the end of the first half, cost them three points. So that remains to be uh, solved yet, but I think overall playing pretty well defensively and offensively. Jimmy Fox now gets a chance to put his foot into it. For the second time tonight, his first one, a 55-yarder that carried into the end zone. Craig Lammers, number seven, back deep. He was a walk-on. Now a sophomore from Jefferson City, Missouri. Whew. Fox a very high kick, but short. Fair catch called for by Lammers, and he hauls it in at the 27-yard line. That's where Missouri will take the field for its first offensive possession of the second half. For you ex-punters, we got a hang time in that 4.8 seconds, which is pretty good hang time. Jim Fox. No, no return. return of the Almost the scraped the roof of the carrier dome here. Line. First and 10, Missouri. Good Sapienza. to see David Sapienza in there, number 51, trotting onto the field. There's a Clay, number 77, who has been hampered by that big cast on his left hand, especially pass blocking. Ronnie Cameron hands off to Daryl Wallace, some running room. He has a first down as he's out to the 37-yard line. They got some nice blocking up inside by David Washington, one of the guards see if we can pick it up on the replay they run to Clay's side watch the blocking they pull both the guard and the tackle from the offside 60 and 72 and there's the blocks you see that hole open up the perfect V as Romney number 72 and 60 the guard did a nice job of spreading out that hole gain of 11 Wallace now with 32 yards on 16 carries Cameron over the middle Complete to number 88, Robert Del Pino, into Syracuse territory at the 46-yard line. Del Pino still does not look 100% as he took a shot in that first half, but has come back, made a grab over the middle, and they are going against those Syracuse linebackers now. They've had a little bit of problem covering the pass. Gain of 16 for the Missouri Tigers. Cameron now 6 of 9 for 73 yards. That was the third reception for Del Pino. Cameron throwing it again. Wide open is Del Pino, but he couldn't handle it. I think he was concerned about going out of bounds, and he may well have been out of bounds even if he had made the catch. As well, he should have been. As you're right, he was uh, pretty far out of bounds. Good, good pressure by Dominic on Cameron. He dumps him at the end. Watch number 85, Remo from the outside. Cameron. There gets the ball up, and you can see he's way out of bounds. I saw somebody with a handful of uh, jersey from Dominic, so they're doing some uh, holding to keep him out of there. 12.09 to play in the third quarter. Syracuse 17, Missouri 9. The handoff to Gerald Wallace. He is stopped initially by Derek Ward, spins forward for a couple more before being dragged down at the 43. Gain of three, it will be third down and seven upcoming for the Tigers of Missouri. And an injured player down on the field for Syracuse. Derek Ward, the man we talked about who has gone down a couple times and always manages to get back in the lineup. That play, incidentally, was the same play they ran before they pulled the offside guard and tackle. And they got about 600 pounds leading up through the hole. And it's a tough play to stop. That time they stopped it for a three-yard gain. Coach McPherson 
Norm Gerber in the middle and George O'Leary with a headset on calling the defenses now as they confer on the sidelines. And if we do get a chance to see the replay, you'll watch Washington, watch in 72 Romney, but it did not go for the yardage it went before as Syracuse really stacked it up. West Dove in there, number 71, on the bottom. They're still tending to Derek Ward as the Orangemen break the defensive huddle. We're down to 11 minutes and 53 seconds to play in period number three. And now Ward hops up and trots off under his own power. Might have just had the wind knocked out of him. Pavaro in number 59. Third and seven. Third and seven for the Missouri Tigers. going to run being pursued being dragged down short of the first down Rob Burnett number 70 a backup defensive lineman dragged down the quarterback number Cameron Rob Burnett runs and tackled eight at the 38 yard line two yards short and a decision for coach Woody Wittenhofer Burnett a red shirt freshman number 70 runs him out all the coverage Four, gone. He's now eliminated two. about two-thirds of the field where he can pass. So when you cover that one main, he's got to go for it. And Cameron, nice job. Red shirt freshman. Long field goal. 55-yard attempt. Wellahan is three for three tonight. This would be a career best. His previous long 54. It's long enough, but it is wide to the right. So Tom Wellahan misses for the first time tonight. And it's still 17-9 Syracuse with 10.51 remaining in the third quarter. You gotta be impressed with his leg, Sean. Boy, oh boy, he was a little bit to the right, but it did not lack for any kind of distance. So the Orangemen come onto the field for their second offensive possession. You're looking at the backup quarterback, Jeff Henningsen, a junior, a walk-on from Omaha, Nebraska. He had to come into the game last week against Indiana and played pretty well for Coach Woody Woodenhofer when Cameron was hurt. McPherson rolling left, looking downfield, complete to his big tight end. Pat Davis crashing down across the Missouri 40 and to the 38-yard line. He was brought down there by Pat Ray, number 23. Davis, nice soft hands. He looks the ball all the way in. He starts off in the right tight end. McPherson rolls to his left and spots Davis cutting across. And just a nice grab. Turns up field. And he's a 240-pound load to bring down when he gets going. And uh, tight ends, both excellent tight ends for Syracuse getting a little more action tonight. The handoff to Daryl Johnston pulling his way down to the 33-yard line. Ray again in on the tackle, number 23. Don McPherson now 7 for 12, passing 87 yards in completions. Johnston picks up a nice chunk, making about 6 on that. Johnson's got 19 yards on five carries, a little below his average. High formation behind McPherson, Drummond in motion, and it is Schwedes split out to the right. Handoff up the middle, big gainer for Johnston. He's across the 15, the 10, and ridden out of bounds inside the 10 yard line at the eight. Saving tackle by Eric McMillan, number 96. Let's see if we can pick up the blocking. There was a stun on by Missouri. They were stunning to the left, and they just picked it up perfectly, and Johnson cut to his left, and you see the saving tackle. Johnson, pretty good acceleration early. He's not going to beat you in a foot race after about 10 yards, but he's got good acceleration. Syracuse knocking on the door. First and goal from the eight. McPherson pitches it to Gaiden. He handles it. He's across the five and ridden out of bounds at the three-yard line. Dan Long drove him out of bounds. He had to be a little bit nervous. It was a late pitch from McPherson, and we've certainly seen uh, troubles on that exchange before. That's what makes the option great, though, is the fear of that late, on, that late pitch, which means they have to cover everybody all the time. And as you said, that was not a very good pitch, and Gaiden did a nice job of handling it, driven out of bounds. But Syracuse, nice play selection, fullback, pass, Go to the wide side of the field. This Missouri defense cannot just sit there and uh, think they're going to tee off because a lot of different things happen. Second and goal from the three. Syracuse trying to build on a 17-9 lead. 
Oh, Johnston didn't get much. He got stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Steve Vandegrift, number 32, an outside linebacker coming up to help make the play. Also, 74, Shapura. 74, Shapura. So it's now third. Quickly, how that game goes, you think they got it knocked, and now it's third, and very important third. Goal to go. Still at the three-yard line. Schwedes is going to go out to the top of the screen. That's the short side of the field. And Drummond to the bottom of the screen, off your picture. High formation behind McPherson. Schwedes in motion. Rolling left. Looking into the end zone. Throwing into the end zone. Incomplete intended for Scott Schwedes. He was well covered, made the right play, cut back to his left, did Schwedes. But the throw, not catchable for Scott. When you've got an athlete like McPherson, you want the run-pass option. And here he's got the option. He's looking for Schwedes. He sees right there that he's hemmed in, so he lets the ball go up late. McDonald, 55, really made him throw the ball. He realized he could not run it in. He tried to pass it in. Tim Vesling on to try for his second field goal. He connected in the first quarter from 34. This will be a shorter kick of 20 yards, but from a severe angle, as you see. They fake it. Mike Kometz, the holder, running. Touchdown, Syracuse! Two and 203 pounds. He can put his head down, even though he's a quarterback, and pull his way into the end zone. Vesling for the point after. It's good. 164 in a row for Syracuse. 851 remaining, third quarter. Syracuse out in front, 24 to 9. Syracuse leading 24 to 9 with 851 to play in the third quarter here at the Carrier Dome. Sean McDonough along with Dale Dreifolcher. There's that adrenaline again. This all the way into the end zone at the top of the yes. And Victor Moore wisely downs it. Missouri comes onto the field. First and 10 at its own 20-yard line. The scoring drive for Syracuse. 62 yards, six plays, and that beautifully called fake field goal as Kometz, the second-team quarterback, picked it up and ran three yards for the touchdown. And it fooled everybody, and the fans loved it, John. Indeed, they did. Give credit to the coaching staff for a bold call and a successful one. You know, that's the kind of thing, if you're Missouri, you can kind of break your back. Uh, figure if you held them to a field goal, and then you get a surprise play, and they got to put it on offensively right now. The Tigers go to the run, and they get very little. Darrell Wallace running behind the left tackle. But back to just about the line of scrimmage, that might have been it. Perhaps a gain of one out to the 21. Injured Syracuse player on the field. It looks like uh, Dominic. We'll see if that's Dominic. That's uh, a little bit of trouble. We'll see if we can pick it up. Derigi checks in, so I think that is Dominic. Might be able to pick up, see what happens. There's Dominic, 85. He just went down. He just went down. He just went down. Dr. Bruce Baker out there, along with head trainer Don Lowe. Coach McPherson trotted out there as well. Take a look at John Dominic. Dale, I was not here for the first four games of the season. I've watched the telecast for yourself and Dave Cohen. I can't believe this is the same defensive line for Syracuse that I watched on television the first four games of the well, season. Well, they're, they're certainly playing very, very inspired football, and uh, they have gone through some injuries as, as we look at Dominic, and I think that that was a factor, not a major one. I think they're just playing a lot better football in general, and they're a little bit young, and it took them a while to come around. Uh, if tonight's an indication, if they can play this consistently, then I'm sure they're going to be very, very pleased with the defensive line. But so far, it's been a problem. Looks like a stinger. Uh, he's checking that arm. You know, you get a lot of those. Feels like uh, there's nothing left in there, like little 7-up bubbles going up and down your arm. And that's exactly what I think happened to him. Gain of one on first down for Daryl Wallace. Down to eight and a half minutes to play third quarter. Second and nine. Cameron the throw. Got hit as he released it. Completes it nonetheless to Herbert Johnson. 
It's out to the 37-yard line, and it's good for a Missouri first down. Nice curl pattern by Johnson. Johnson, number 12, just comes from the left side of the formation. Watch him, he's at the top of the screen, just does a curl. And of course, that's the toughest play to really cover. T.D. Wald was on him. First and 10, Missouri, at the Tigers' 38-yard line. Option, Cameron pitches it to the oh, oh, yes, and he fumbles oh. the football. It's recovered by Syracuse at the Missouri 35. Peter Ewald caused that fumble. He really gave him a smack. I believe Terry Wooden, number 90, recovered it as well. Watch him string out the option. There's Cameron. Now he's going to make a pitch very late. There's the pitch a little bit behind number 45. And you saw the hit that drove the ball out. And number 45, Essen, was the man who was the beneficiary of that hit. Terry Wooden, number 90, up with it. If you're looking for a defensive star of the game for Syracuse, that might be him right there, Terry Wooden, the redshirt freshman from Farmington, Connecticut. Syracuse with a chance to pour it on here. They go into the line for two. Daryl Johnston. A short game, crossing the 35. They'll let the fullback establish itself again give a kind of a varied offense they had done that the last time when they fake field goal or yeah fake field goal but what they did is they ran the ball inside they ran a pass they ran an option i think they really are keeping missouri defense confused second, second down long. yeah call it nine for syracuse twin receivers out to the left and person back to pass swings it out to gaden gaden Across the 35, the 30, the 25, down to the 20, and crashing down to the 18-yard line. Took two men to drag him down. Adrian Jones and Stan Long combining on the tackle. Watch what Gaten does at the end of this, Sean. This is what you got to like about him. First of all, he does the first thing right. He catches the ball, looks it into his hands. Now watch him go downfield. Now he's going to switch hands as Stan Long, 21, comes up. Watch him deliver a blow. Boom! Mm. Right there, picks up a couple extra at the end. Nice forearm. First and 10, Syracuse from the 19. They come on a blitz. Gaden goes up the middle, across the 15, and down to the 14-yard line. Tripped up by Daryl Darling, the nose tackle, wearing number 58. We have not seen a lot of passes to the Syracuse backs other than Byron Abraham, and Gaden's getting his share tonight. They were a little worried about his hands, but boy, uh, on that play, he looked very, very good. 24 to 9, Syracuse leading with six and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Second down five from the 14. High formation, whistle sounds, movement in the line. Garrett, a half a count too soon, number 56 on the left side, left early. And the offensive line, I believe that's the third or fourth false start they've had. At least. Two of them in a row in the very first quarter, very first series. It'll be a five-yard walk-off against the Syracuse Orangemen. Second and ten upcoming for Syracuse back at the 19. First down marker just over the 10 and about the 9. Seager, offense, second down. Hasn't been a very busy night with the flags for the referee, John Laurie and his crew. Haven't seen a hold all night, have we? Nope. Haven't seen much of anything That's except right. a lot of illegal procedure on both sides on second and ten the person drops straight back going to the end zone man open and he's brought down touchdown. For a touchdown they couldn't bring him down in the field of play it's a touchdown syracuse to bell glover on the reception oh one of those flags we talked about is now down and it's a hole against syracuse shouldn't have said anything Great effort by Deval Glover. He's just now seeing the penalty flag that's down on the 24-yard line. Oh, that's a shame. What a great effort. Looked like he was going to be brought down to the ground at about the one or two-yard line, but he stayed with it, did Deval Glover. Out of Troy, New York, only a sophomore. And he's one of the people they're very, very high on as receivers. And that was a bad time for a hold. Holding. Offense, second down. Just when you said we hadn't seen a hold, we see I one. I know it. I shouldn't have said anything. Keep quiet from now on, will you please? Let's see if we can pick up the hold. 
See if it's obvious. Uh, kind of, you know, when you break contact, by the way, let's finish up and watch what a great job DePaul Glover did for not What an effort. A good effort. Excellent effort. Jones helped drag him in as he lost his momentum going backwards there. I was going to say, as the defensive lineman breaks away, sometimes you can see that jersey being held onto, and that's exactly what happened. Second and 20 from the 29-yard line. Less than six minutes to play third quarter. Syracuse 24, Missouri 9. They swing it out the game. He bobbles it, has it. Across the 25. Penalty flag is down again. He's across the 10-yard line. Before being dragged down by Gary Justice, but there is a marker back at the 25. And it's going to go against Syracuse, I believe. See if we can pick it up. Illegal use of hands. That's, well, you know, they're in the book to be called, but it was, I think they got it on Schwedes. We or, should point out this is a split crew with three officials from the Big Eight and four officials from uh, the eastern part of the country, the independent officials that referee the Syracuse games. Yeah, now there's a big discussion about where the ball Somebody just waved the flag like it was supposed to be off. I've seen quicker decisions at the UN here. Let's see what the... Oh, they're going to pick up the flag. Yes. No foul called. And you were right, Dale. It wasn't that much of a penalty. The referee, John Laurie. <laughs> I bet she doesn't make any pass, explanation. Pass did not cross the line of scrimmage. Ah. Pass did not cross the line of scrimmage. Disregard the flag. The play stands, and Syracuse will get it at the 10-yard line. Good point. So the ball did not cross the line of scrimmage, therefore it wasn't a forward pass. No, it was a forward pass, but it... It's a completion for McPherson. He's now 8 for 14 for 107 yards. As long as the ball isn't across the line of scrimmage, you can block downfield. Third and one, and they're waiting. The referee, John Laurie, coming back in to set the clock. They'll start to wind the 25-second clock. Third and one. First down and more. Drummond down to the one. His knee touched just before reaching the end zone. Well, the more I see this game, the more I think we picked some great people to highlight at the beginning. <laughs> Bob Jubendo, one of our producers, responsible for that. But let's watch Drummond from the... End zone camera running over people. Steps on Gary Justice on the way into the end zone, but as they said, he came up a half a yard short. First down, however. First and goal from the one. Drummond with penalty oh, flags no. flying. Oh. Stopped short of the goal line. What's the call here? Was not delay of game. Four seconds showing on the snap. Was there movement again? We're gonna get another. I'm gonna wait for John Laurie to sort <laughs> that one out for so us. So am I. It was a dead ball foul before the snap, so they'll mark it half the distance to the goal line. There isn't that far to go. They're on the one. They'll go to the half. Dead ball. Substitution fraction, substitution fraction. First step. There's Drummond. Let's see what he does when he hits the hits the turf. Sure. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> That's right. My knee's not down. First and half a yard to go for a Syracuse touchdown. Gaten oh, ran into McPherson. Oh, McPherson oh, has oh. the ball. And he's down short of the goal line. That play all messed up from the start as McPherson and Gaden collided. I always like to just have the quarterback key. You're down that close. Why, why fool around with a handoff, I think, sometimes? I guess the good thing about this is that time is being eaten off the clock. Absolutely. I was going to say, this is the opposite of what's happened to Syracuse in the past. They've been out there and out there and out there defensively. Now the shoe's on the other foot. That's your score with 4.23 to play in the third quarter. Gaten up and into the end zone. Touchdown, Harold Gaten.
It's now 30 to 9 in favor of Syracuse with the extra point forthcoming. Nestling bidding for his fourth extra point of the evening. It would be number 165 in a row for Syracuse. Dating back to 1978. It's good. And the score with 4.15 remaining in the third quarter. Syracuse 31, Missouri 9. Syracuse football continues after this word from your local system. Haven't seen much of that this year as the Syracuse cheerleaders do push-ups. They got to do 31. And that amount of points hasn't been around in a long time. I want to see bigger biceps on those cheerleaders by the end of the season. <laughs> Moore has to down it again. Another booming kickoff by Tim Bessling. He has really picked up the tradition of uh, excellent Syracuse field goal kickers. Gary Anderson, Don McCauley in recent memory, and uh, now this young man, Tim Besley. It's amazing how they changed when they were freshmen. I met him when he was a freshman. He was kind of skinny and scrawny. Now he's a much stronger kid. Uh, I think that uh, he's the kind of guy that uh, you'd like to have around for a while. There's a scoring drive, 35 yards, nine plays. And Off the turnover by the Missouri Tigers, the fumble recovery by Terry Wooden. New quarterback in for the Missouri Tigers. The backup is in. Jeff Henningsen wearing number 14. They've got a bunch of reserves in now to the Tigers. Dump made that tackle. And by the way, John Dominic is back in or was back in at the beginning of this series. That was Tommy Stowers, number 31, into the game for the first time on that carry, and he gained a yard out to the 21. Henningsen, a junior from Omaha, Nebraska, a walk-on. He's going to throw. Throws up the field and completes it to Robert Del Pino, number 88, at about the 35-yard line. Henningsen appearing in his second game of the season. They obviously feel Henningsen is a better thrower because Cameron did not do much running inside. As a matter of fact, he didn't do much probing the three first half uh, field goals, but uh, that was it. And now they got so far behind, I think they're going to have to throw the ball. Henningsen comes into the game 12 for 23 for 168 yards. One interception and one touchdown. His completion percentage, 52%. Going for Herbert oh, Johnson, nearly intercepted. intercepted. Marcus Paul moving over on the coverage on Herbert Johnson. We haven't called Herbert Johnson's number a lot tonight, but he was an all Big 8 player, first team a year ago. Well, Johnson and Paul hooked up here, and watch Paul going for the ball. Watch the grab he makes. Almost does it. Juggling the ball as they go out of bounds. Second and ten for the Missouri Tigers. Freeze, Dove, and Dominic up there. Only three field goals put on the board for the Tigers in this football game. Dominic chases Hennington out of the pocket. Has to run with it. He's across midfield and out of bounds at the Syracuse 47. Cameron advertised as the quarterback who was the running threat, but Henningsen showing decent foot speed there. And I, I think they'll give Henningsen as much of these as he wants because this is not really going to help. Of course, he had no choice. That's so not a criticism of him. Receivers are covered in a good outside pressure by Dominic, and he tucks the ball up and goes. Actually, he doesn't tuck it, but he's got it in the outside hand, which is good, and he just steps out of bounds. But First they're putting ten. good pressure. I just Excuse me, Sean. Good pressure from the inside and the outside. Six men up on the line for Syracuse. They toss it to Wallace. He turns the corner. It's rammed out of bounds by David Favaro at the 41-yard line. Not much from Mr. Wallace today. 19 carries for 42 yards for Daryl Wallace. Second down five, Missouri. Henningsen hands off to Wallace. Good shift. He has the first down as he crosses the 35. I think this is one of those statistics that um, Missouri is going to keep. Because watch John Clay, the right tackle. On dog. Watch him come down. And he just one arm. Oh, you flat. see the strength on that man. Really created a large hole. He, he definitely is a good one. And that left hand being wrapped up like that is really hurting his efficiency. But also, let's give Wes Doug credit. He's played a good game against Clay. That's a war club he's got on his left wrist. He doesn't do much with it, though. It really must be hurting him. 
Down to two and a half minutes to play, third period. Syracuse leading, Missouri 31 to nine. Henningsen looking deep, rowing deep toward the end zone for Delfino. Intercepted! Jeff Mangrum on the interception in the end zone. It's a touchback. It'll come out to the 20 yard line. That pass right from when it left Henningsen. I knew it was going to go long. It was just a question whether anybody from Syracuse would be back far enough. That's a touchback. And the ball will be at the 20 yard line first. Day. Good protection, and you just could tell that that was going to go far, and Mangrum, in back of the intended receiver, Victor Moore, and a nice reception by Mangrum. First interception for Mangrum. Syracuse on offense with 2.22 to go in the third quarter. McPherson throws it back to Gaden. Gaden trying to salvage what he can. He'll be dropped for a loss. Dick Shapora made the play, number 74. I think Mosley's in there now. They have taken Gaden out. Yeah, 42. Uh, check that. It is Mosley. Gaden has been playing very well. I think they want to give him a rest. It's just a little it was a pitch. He makes a little pass out of it, and Mosley gets the Second ball, but it took 13. so long to develop. They had great outside pursuit, and Mosley gets nowhere. Mosley getting more playing time tonight. He's the tailback. On second and 13, onto the lane, Mosley, running room to his left. Brought down to the 25-yard line. Incidentally, the fullback, number, number 49, Chris Barnes, for Syracuse, seeing this first action. Watch, there's a delayed handoff. Nice blocking by the offensive line. Finally brought down by 96, Eric McDonald. The number's on Barnes. He's a junior, 5'10", 2'11". Syracuse 0 for 5 on third down. Really hasn't meant much because they're leading 31-9. to Third and 5. Over the middle, complete to Scott Schwedes. Schwedes is going to break this one. Scott Schwedes being chased by McMillan. He'll be dragged out at the 10-yard line. Scott Schwedes showing his great speed was caught from behind, but I think he had to be running out of gas because it took a lot of effort just to keep his balance at midfield. There he is, Scott Schwedes. That's going to give him some more numbers. Watch Schwedes, 16. Incidentally, great protection for McPherson. Stoffel did a nice job, and look, watch him stop. Hand down, comes back. He uses Pat Kelly well. Kelly screams off, drumming his teammate from Jamesville DeWitt. Made an attempt at a block, but he couldn't get there. McMillan brings him down. First and goal from the nine. Syracuse trying to build on a 31-9 lead. McPherson spins. Take it. Cuts up the middle. John McPherson. Touchdown, Syracuse. From nine yards out, Don McPherson has given Syracuse a 37-9 lead. A little over-exuberant there, but I saw the hole open up, and I knew that they couldn't take him on a cutback, and there he does just what he should. Cuts back, puts his head down. Momentum carried him into the end zone. <laughs> just barely. Tim Besling on for his fifth attempt at an extra point, number 166 in a row. If it's good. And it is Syracuse leads 38 to 9 with 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Syracuse football continues after this word from your local system. Syracuse on their way to their first victory of 1986, leading 38 to 9. Less than a minute to play third quarter. There's a clip. Flag is down as Victor Moore runs it out of his end zone. He is dragged down before the 15-yard line. On the tackle, David Holmes, number 38. Keep doing those push-ups. 80 yards, three plays, McPherson on a nice five-yard cutback. And there's an injured player. Vernon Boyd, number 41, down for the Missouri Tigers. The clip will like, be uh, He may be the clipper. Missouri. The clip E didn't get hurt. But it looked like, uh, I don't know if it was Boyd or not. We'll see on the replay. 
there's the flag right there. Comes straight up the field. Mm. I think Boyd got wiped out by the guy who was clipped for Syracuse. That's right. As so often happens, it's not always the primary guy, and then the other bodies fall down, and Boyd is... Still down. Yes, he is. With 32 seconds to play in the third quarter, and the walk-off against the Missouri Tigers. We'll bring it back inside the 10-yard line to the six. The referee is John Lorry. John's decided that uh, with the game getting a little bit out of hand from a one-sided score standpoint, he won't even bother to turn on the microphone. And that's good to see Vernon Boyd up on his feet and trotting off under his own power. Uh, it is a very, very tough game. When you've got people this big crashing into each other at high speed, that can happen. There's the score of 38-9, Syracuse. Scoring output, we'll have to get the record books out to see when uh, they scored this many points the last time. It certainly hasn't been this season, I can tell you that. No, it hasn't. The previous high, 28 points against Army. On first down, it's a run left for the Missouri Tigers. Darrell Wallace, the ball carrier, across the 10 to about the 11-yard line. Wallace has been stuffed all night long by the Syracuse defense. 21 carries, 52 yards. They have done a super job, and I think the offense has given them a lot of breaks in terms of giving them a little rest period. That's the end of the third quarter. As time expires, Syracuse led by a score of 17 to 9 at the half. They have poured it on here in the third quarter, leading by a score of 38 to 9 after three. This is Syracuse football, 86. <laughs> Welcome back to the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. The Orangemen leading 38 tonight at the end of three quarters. They outscored the Missouri Tigers 21 to nothing in the third quarter. Syracuse hadn't scored in the third quarter all year in the previous four games. They had been outscored 31 to nothing in the third quarter this season. And they outscored the Tigers 21 to nothing in period three tonight to take a commanding 38 to nine lead. This is the most aggressive I have seen Syracuse playing in both offensively and defensively. They made some mistakes, they made some fumbles, but uh, you know, it's not getting them down like it did before. They come right back, show a lot of poise, and have played excellent football all night. And we mentioned it at the time, you could really see it right when they came out of the tunnel for the opening kickoff. And the fans, you know, they picked a good time to have a great game because this is the most fans they've had so far this year, and uh, they've really been into the game. Third down and one. At the 16, Wallace spun forward. Going to be very close, but I think he stopped short of the first down. The Tigers think so. The punting team is creeping out onto the field. Fred Derigi, number 67, I believe, through there. Fred Derigi, Dominic down, and Derigi comes in from the side and just very, very aggressive. And that's what you like to see. Don't. Don't give him any quarter. Make sure he doesn't lean up over. And there's Coach Mack on the sideline, and he, he looks like he's down by 38 to 9. Well, a hand punting. This oh. time, not a good one at all. A very short kick. Bouncing at the 36 and backwards to the 34 yard line. After punts of 42, 51, and 48, Tom Wellahan shanks one, and Syracuse will take over just inside the 35 yard line. Just a 17 yard punt for Wellahan. And it's unusual. He has done a great job. You know, it's unusual to have a guy who does your place kicking and your punting. It uh, really has done a spectacular job up until that point. Mike Kometz, number seven, now in a quarterback. He's already been a factor in the game. As the holder on the fake field goal, Kometz ran it in from three yards to give Syracuse a 24 to 9 lead at that time. 13-36 to play, 38-9, Syracuse leading Missouri. Byron it's a short game for Byron Abraham. Actually, it's no game. He stopped behind the line of scrimmage. 98, Lee Johnson made the tackle. He's a freshman. This is the time, if you're Missouri, you get some people in, although you don't like to use those freshmen. You have to give them that red shirt here if you can. One thing about Kometz, he is not a real option quarterback, so I don't think we'll see him carry the ball too much. Actually, he's a more of a passer. Kometz is the quarterback. Chris Barnes and Byron Abraham, the backfield. Kometz rolling to his right, looking in the direction of Glover. 
runs with it down to the 31 yard line. Stays inbound. Mike Walk continues to run as Adrian Jones, number two, made the tackle. Mike Kometz has helped out Syracuse when they've needed it. Actually was the starting quarterback until Don McPherson took over, but has hung with the team, does a great Eight job, and has a great yards. attitude. Here he tucks it up. The and he comes up uh, way short of the first, but he's still got a third down left to go. Third and make third it about seven. seven. Uh, that's under Jim Leibel, the center, wearing number 77. Straight back. Pressure from Shapura. Still on his feet. Throws complete to Slady. Across the 20 and down at the 16-yard line. Great job by Mike Kometz to keep his balance. In the NFL, that would have been called in the grasp of Dick Shapura, but not in college football, and Kometz completed it to Scott Schwede. Well, as I said, he's a little bit better passer than he is runner. He was going to pass. He just dropped straight back. He's not much of a rollout man, and there's the pressure inside. He finally gets up, keeps his balance. That was Shapura, as you said, who put the pressure on, but great presence of mind, dropped it off to Schwede. Scott Schwedes, four receptions now for 97 yards. Up the middle, Barnes. Chris Barnes. Stopped by Maurice Carrick, the 57, who rolls over him for a little extra effort. Chris Barnes, a junior from Middletown, New Jersey. Let's give some credit as we look at this replay here. Barnes doesn't get much this time, but the offensive line has been doing a great job. And Jimmy Leibel, the offensive center, kind of unheralded, I think, has been doing an excellent job as a leader of the offensive line. Syracuse, 38, Missouri, 9. 11 and a half minutes to play in the ball game. High formation behind Kometz. A handoff to the tailback, Abraham. He's wrapped up by the linebacker, Steve Mandegrim, number 32. That'll bring up third down at about five for the Orangemen. There's Garrity and Craig Stoble, also that offensive line unit. And Blake Bednar is number 79, the man... I've been very impressed with him. Last year he was playing high school football. He's not a redshirt freshman. He's a true freshman. And uh, he has just uh, stepped in and I think really helped him out. There he is. Look at the arms. <laughs> <laughs> freshman. Third and six. From the 13. The Mets rolling left. The Sweeney. Oh, he got drilled. It's an incomplete pass. And he was absolutely clocked by number 23, Pat Ray. But as usual, Scott Schwede bounces it right back up to his feet. This looks like a guided missile headed for a target, and Scott Schwede was the target. And watch and see what happens. Pat Ray, the ball hangs up a little bit, and Schwede has got to go out for it, and there's Ray. What a smack. Tim Vesling on for a field goal of 30 yards. He's one for one. There's been one fake. Don't think they'll fake this one. The kick is up. And right down the middle, Tim Vesling two for two tonight. Now five for seven on the season in field goals. And Syracuse adds to its lead. It's now 41 to nine with 10 39 to play in the fourth quarter. We'll take a break and be right back. You're watching Syracuse football 86. By far the largest home crowd of the season on hand here at the Carrier Dome, 41,035. 41 a magic number. Syracuse leading 41 to nine. The big crowd picked the right night to come. They'll win this Syracuse's first victory of the season. More from the goal line. Again, does not make the 20. Lunge forward, might have got the ball just to the 20, but. The special teams have done a great job tonight. Everybody really has done a great job tonight. Just three field goals for the Missouri Tigers and 41 points put on the board by the offense. Last points they scored last year was 48 against Louisville. They had 41 against Boston College, but uh, they really let it out tonight. There's Mac on the sidelines with his defensive coaches. Dick McPherson on the verge of his 71st career coaching victory. to throw out into the flat for Victor Moore, number 28. He's dropped at the 25 after a gain of five. Is complete to Victor Moore. Straight drop back. He really 
Kelly throws a nice ball. Receiver Victor Moore not able to do much. Three orange men pounce on him. Gain of five, second and five. With 10 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Henningsen running the option. Cuts it upfield and has the first down. Football. Drop the football and after the whistle. Missouri will retain possession. They'll have first and 10 at the 38. Oh, Henningsen took a shot. I believe it was Sapienza, but they run the option. They pull the two offensive linemen. They take the pitch man. There's a good block. I didn't get the number, but watch him as he goes down. No, that was number 94. Phrase that really put the hit on him. And it seemed to be a good call. Henningsen back struck the ground before the ball popped free. High formation behind Henningsen. Takes the hand off to Vernon Boyd. Throws over the middle into a crowd, but it's complete to the tight end, Brent Peterson. Number 85, one of four transfers from Drake University on the Missouri team. Peterson, a senior, 6'4", 224 pounds. They got a number of transfers from Drake, and uh, they also had some junior college transfers. They had eight total players, four from Drake, four from junior colleges, and they all made the two deep rosters. So well, I guess that's good and it's bad. It shows that you didn't have much there before. Well, but, when you're uh, one in ten, you go looking for help. That's right. Henningsen again, the oxen again, he'll keep, he'll cross the 45 and go down at the 44. Sean Whiteman, number 22, redshirt freshman out of Clearwater, Florida, made the tackle for Syracuse. Henningsen wasn't supposed to do this. This was supposed to be Cameron's game. That's right, and uh, they said they're not the same team without Cameron in there, and uh, Cameron, as we said, got them, I suppose, as the quarterback of record when they got their nine points, but really held them to uh, not much. will throw it, complete to Vernon Boyd, who bobbled it momentarily, then put his head down and runs forward to the 38, close to a first down. David Bavaro makes the stop. His brother, a little more famous than him, the tight end for the New York Giants, but they like David Bavaro, and he's one of the young players that is going to get some experience. Actually started a game, but is playing a lot. David, one of many players on the Syracuse team from my neck of the woods, Massachusetts, and we have a lot of people uh, along the Syracuse football network who watch the games in David's hometown of Danvers, Massachusetts. We want to welcome all those watching along the network, New England Sports Network, Sports Channel of New York, New York Cable, and Home Team Sports. Hope you're enjoying Syracuse football. The Orange been on the verge of going to one and four. The Missouri Tigers will fall to one and three. Their one victory in the opener against Utah State by a score of 24 to 10. All three of the games thus far from Missouri previous to tonight were at home in Columbia, Missouri. The loss is a two-point decision to Texas, and they lost by 17 to Indiana. Next week, it's Colorado on the agenda. Oh, oh. I don't know if he made it. He only made it about an inch or two. I think he did make it. And if he did, it wasn't by very much. They were obviously very pleased with the game against Texas, even though it was a loss, but... They're going to measure again. When you play the Missouris in your Syracuse football at this stage of the program, you expect to win. Right. Maybe because you're 0 4, you shouldn't expect to, but I think they always knew and felt that they had a good football team. But they really had to prove it to themselves, and tonight they did. Not just a victory, but a convincing victory. Well, right now, you saw just how short that was. It must have been a pebble grain short of that as the football. So much for I thought he made it. I was right the first time. He might have been short. He was. They'll try again on fourth and one. Absolutely nowhere. It's going to be very close. <laughs> we might see our third successive measurement. He was stopped short. Watch. I think he's short. He tried the to go over the, the guard. Started, I think he's short. He tried to go right over the center, actually. Then he, then he got stopped, and then he busts out to the side before he gets stopped. Where they have it spotted, I think from our angle, he's short. Of course, I said I thought he had it last time. So this might be the kiss of death of the Syracuse defense. He is short. 
First down, Orange been going the other way, and what a great defensive stand by the Orange. David Holmes made the tackle, sophomore out of New Jersey. Some of these second team guys get a chance to play, and that was a real nice job by David Holmes as he wrapped up the quarterback about as Carl Allenberg, the PA man, said two millimeters short of a first down. <laughs> Carl, one of the many people who makes uh, coming to the Carrier Dome such a pleasurable experience. Certainly one of the finest public address announcers I have ever heard. Commence with 8.03 to play in Syracuse, leading 41 to 9. Hands off to Chris Barnes, the pull back up the middle, a penalty flag is down as Barnes picked up two. Whole scale substitutions. Terry Darty has come in, number 89, a reserve tight end. He's a red shirt freshman out of Owego, New York. Six Offside the call, by the way, against Missouri. It'll be an accepted penalty by the Orange, but they only gained two on the play from scrimmage. They'll get five and the down over again on the penalty. Schrady's under the towel there, getting a well deserved rest, and after that shot that he took, I'm sure he's trying to shake off the cobwebs that are up there. Been a good night for Scott Schwabies. Assume the Syracuse career touchdown reception lead. He's now caught a ball in 34 consecutive games. Four catches for 97 yards for Scott. Coach Woody Woodenhofer in the paper today compared him to Steve Largen of the Seattle Seahawks. Barnes broke free from the tackler and busts his way down to the 35-yard line. Off Missouri, they'll spot him back. There is knee touch to the 37, but nonetheless, a big gainer for Chris Barnes on Don't first you love and fullbacks? I just love fullbacks when they get a big hole because they go through in their way. All right, let's have 97 guys hit me. And then all of a sudden they say, wow, look, I'm still on my feet. And he just rumbles straight ahead. And Barnes, good yardage, first down. 21 yards on the pickup. <laughs> Walter Mosley takes the handoff, tries to get outside, he can't do it. Adrian Jones, number two, made the tackle. And a little late hit is going to cost Missouri, a 15, number 36, Eric Ekum. A linebacker. A tad late. Personal foul the call. Fine job done by John Lorry, the referee, and his crew tonight. Mosley's got great speed and very shifty. Right there he goes down. There there's late. the late hit. Yep. And that's the wrong place to do it, right in front of the opposing bench. 15-yard walk-off. Let's give credit to the officials. Jim Owens, also the umpire. Tom Ellers, the headlinesman. Let's Dead listen ball. to John Laurie first. Personal foul on the defense. Down. Joe Grimmer, the line judge tonight. Jim Klingen, the side ball. judge. John Schroeder, the field judge. And Mike Donato, the back judge. I flew up on the plane with him today from Boston, Mike Donato. Glover in motion, commits. Goes down after a game of perhaps one, but that's all. As I said, he's not much of an option quarterback, but... Uh, with 41 to nine, you might as well try. That's right. Have a little fun to yourself. But he can throw the ball, but I'm sure they would prefer not to throw the ball with 635. Coach Mack knows what it's like when you're down, but of course you've got to go out and run some offense. You can't just say let's give the ball up. So Mike Kometz runs the option, doesn't get much. Second and 11. You're just tuning in. Syracuse led by a score of 10 to 3 at the end of the first quarter. 17 to 9 at the half. Then they busted it open with 21 unanswered points in the third quarter. To take a 38 to 9 lead. They now lead 41 to 9 as Kometz starts forward for a couple more. Down to 6.05 of the clock running to play here in the fourth quarter. One of the captains, Tim Pigeon, on the sideline, he has been sidelined with recurring headaches. And that's something that a linebacker really has a lot of problems getting cured from because you go right back out. You know, if you're a wide receiver, uh, it doesn't always happen. But when you're an inside linebacker, you're always going to be hitting people with that helmet. Legally, of course. And, but, I mean, it's always going to be something that you're going to see. Here's the quarterback draw. Komet just tucks it up. Gets that ball out as far as he can. It's going to be third and eight. At the Missouri 18-yard line. Komet 
Goes over the middle. It's complete to Terry Doherty, the tight end. And he's inside the five-yard line, down to the three. First reception of the season for Terry Doherty, and the first of his career. Cross was all over Comets. Watch that. Just got rid of it in time, and a nicely thrown ball, and Doherty kind of gets his feet underneath him, but lunges ahead. As you mentioned, he's out of Owego, New York. His brother John was a standout wrestler at Syracuse University. Very good wrestler. Byron Abraham slicing his way toward the goal line. Flag goes down. Temper is flaring. Lee Johnson, number 98, talking to one of the orange men. There's another one. It's flag day all of a sudden. Maybe the loft set. McMillan from, we'll let John Laurie tell us. Personal foul, yes. Personal foul, yes. Cancel, yes. Incidentally, that makes uh, John Laurie seven for nine turning the mic on. Yeah. <laughs> He's missed twice. They're going to talk it over. Maybe he'll turn the mic on. At any rate, I, a little bit of pushing and shoving, and when you're down 41-9, I guess that's uh, what happens. They might be discussing whether it's necessary to eject anyone from the football game. 5-10 remaining, fourth quarter, Syracuse 41, Missouri 9. You know, it's interesting, I see people leaving a little early tonight, but with big smiles on their faces. Yes. And give these people credit, 0-4, but 41,000 people showed up tonight. And uh, Syracuse, although they have a week off, has certainly got some momentum and some attitude already for Penn State. Okay, we have two dead ball penalties. Two dead ball penalties. He only pointed to one team. <laughs> he told us verbally two dead ball penalties. Eight for nine. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Well, perhaps they were both against Missouri. First of all, defense. I think they might have both been because if they were offsetting, well, no, now he's bringing it, now he's bringing it back. Yeah. And they marked the, the one spot. half the distance to the goal of penalty against Missouri, then this one goes back. Yeah. Dead ball, first of foul, offense, second down. Really, Missouri benefiting from being deep in their own end. That's right. So the ball after a long conversation sure. 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 the 16 and Dick McPherson well, wants an explanation and John Laurie, as all good officials do, will oblige him and explain it to him. You know, I don't like it when the officials run away without an explanation no. or like this. And Coach McPherson feels that uh, one was a little more blatant and that his player was just reacting to the shot under the chin. They were both 15-yard penalties, but Missouri can only be penalized half the distance to the goal line. Syracuse on the 16-yard line now. Second down and goal from the 16. Excuse me, I was just going to say Missouri, a hard-hitting team, even if it's a little bit after the whistle on occasion, but they really have hit very, very hard. The Mets hands off to Byron Abraham, has some running room. It closes up quickly. Eric McMillan bulldogged him out of bounds at about the 10. They'll spot it at the 11. McMillan is the man who was involved in that altercation. Kind of a strange number for a strong safety. Number 96, 62, 191 out of Silver Spring, Maryland. And William Pennyfeather, number 18, checks in as a wide receiver for Syracuse. Lots of folks getting a chance to play in the orange and blue tonight. Pennyfeather, some people thought would be redshirted, but he played last week and took care of his redshirt status. He's out of Perth Amboy, New Jersey. 4.45 to play. Syracuse, 41, Missouri 9. Syracuse, 25% on third down. They won't improve on that percentage as Abraham crashes down to the 10. It'll be fourth down. What do you do, coach? I think you just run another play and give him the ball and get out of here with a win. Yes. No sense in uh, running it up, so to speak. They have to play them in Columbia next year. Don't want to give the Tigers any more fuel next year in Columbia. Final score, Temple 19, Pitt 13.
Syracuse breaks the huddle, fourth and ten, and time has run out on the 25-second clock. That'll be a five-yard walk-off against the Orange. Delay the game, five yards against Syracuse. Goal to go from the 15. Mike Kometz came in for Don McPherson after the issue was well settled. McPherson went 9 for 15 passing for 173 yards. Kometz is 2 for 3 so far for 30 yards. Handoff goes up the middle. Syracuse not trying to add insult to injury. Len Nelson on the carry. He stopped. The fans are booing, but let's show some sportsmanship, Syracuse. I think 41 to 9 is enough damage done for one night. Well, it certainly has been an exciting game if you're a Syracuse fan. It was an exciting first half, actually. And third quarter came out, Syracuse just blew them away, which was uncharacteristic. They've had problems in the third quarter this year, but certainly not today. They did a great job. We started the night with 41,035 on hand. That number is dwindling rapidly. Henningson, still a quarterback. Look out, he'll get swarmed under. Keith Freiberg, number 98, took him down. Lots of pressure from the Orangemen. Injured player down for Syracuse. Injured player. Let's see if we can pick up what happened. It was Greg Weissenberger who forced Henningsen out of the pocket and then Freiberg smothered him. Number 70 down for the Orangemen. That's Rob Burnett, defensive lineman, filling in. Weisenberger on that play. He's a defensive tackle, six foot, 245, redshirt freshman out of Flushing. And he flushed him out of the pocket. That's right. 346, the time remaining. We're in the fourth quarter with the Syracuse Orangemen, leading 49, 41 to 9, rather. They have never trailed in the football game. Jumped out to a 3-0 lead. The Tigers tied it at 3, but that was the last time we were tied. Syracuse got up to 17-3. To had the margin cut to 17-9, to but 21 unanswered points in the third quarter made it 38-9. to Three more in the fourth. 41-9 to our score. Burnett is a redshirt freshman out of Corum, New York, 6'3", 248. And they're going to check out his left leg as we're down to a 342. Lone setback. Stowers takes the handoff from Henningsen. Gets to about the 14 where he's stacked up and driven back. Third down, 14 yards to go. Or check that. Nine yards to go. Two yard game. Third inning. Henningson fakes the handoff. Looking for Lammers. It's incomplete. Sean Whiteman, number 22, on the coverage for Syracuse. And it's another punting situation for Wellahan. His last punt, not a good one, just 17 yards. Pete Ewald and Marcus Paul back. Paul, the short man. Ewald standing on his own 45. Runs up to catch it at the 50. Runs right. Gets a couple of blocks. Pete Ewald across the 30 and down to the 28 yard line. Peter Ewald, the 35 yard punt. Very little to find fault with tonight's special team. I was just going to say, they've done a super job. They got the major block at the point of attack. Got some people out in front of him. And he just rumbles on down. Good speed, Dan Busey out in front of it, number 55. Todd Philcox, number five, now in a quarterback for Syracuse. The punt, 35 yards, the return, 22 for D.D. Wall. Flags down. 
Bill Cox has looked good in a number of spring games. He's a big kid, 6'4", 205, throws the ball well. Todd, a sophomore out of Norwalk, Connecticut. Five-yard walk-off against the Orangemen. Still another illegal procedure. I guess if you want to find fault with something, that would be it. There have been uh, a lot of illegal procedure penalties called against Syracuse. Chris Collins, a junior college transfer out of Oceanside, California, was the man who went offside, number 74. Transferred in from Palomar Junior College. Lever goes in motion. Bill Cox hands off to Walter Mosley. Mosley down to the 26-yard line. Walter Mosley to the 25-yard line. Coach Woody Woodenhofer really has left in almost his entire starting defensive team. I don't know if he wants to punish them for giving up 41 points, but you'd think with Colorado on the schedule next week, he'd want to rest some of these fellows. Colorado, a very tough 0-4 team, if you can we believe that's it. Like. That's right, absolutely. And Mosley getting some playing time here at the end. Lots of time left, 2 19. Smiles abound here at the Carrier Dome. The Syracuse Orangemen on their way to their first victory of the season. Bill Cox, quarterback draw. Down to the 21. He gets hit hard there by Darren McDonald, number 55, a freshman out of Ellisville, Missouri. That'll bring up third down for the Orange and short. About three yards to go for a Syracuse first down. Quarterback draw, I've seen it used a number of times before. Bill Cox, as we said, big kid, 6'4, stretches out. Still short by a positive three. Yeah. Mosley will not get the first down as he's dropped just short of the 20 yard line. Walter now with six carries and 19 yards. Nobody's stopping the clock. The one 13 now in counting. They say that Coach Woody Woodenhofer, in his two years at Missouri, has had two top 15 recruiting, recruiting classes in the nation, but it certainly seems that the Missouri Tigers have a lot of work left before they're going to move closer to the top of the big eight. First down for Syracuse, Len Nelson picks it up, number 43, as he breaks off left tackle. Down to the 15-yard line. Terry Fazner. Nelson is a running back out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, six foot, 227. And everybody getting a chance to play. There goes Nelson, big kid. He's only a sophomore. Mosley, fancy footwork down to about the 11. Don't know if Syracuse will have to run another play. We'll see when they wind it up. No, they won't. No, they won't. That will do it. Dick McPherson trotting across the field to shake hands with Woody Wittenhofer. Now he'll back up and wait for the seconds to tick off. <laughs> well, I think he's got to be somewhat relieved as he's got his first win, and they did it in a convincing fashion tonight. Given credit also for being a sportsman, Syracuse really could have piled it on here at the end of the football game and did not. A couple of former professional football coaches, Woody Wittenhofer and Dick McPherson, hoping that better times lie ahead for both programs. Syracuse with the victory, now one and four. The Missouri Tigers with the defeat, now one and three. The final score here at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. The Orangemen, 41, and the Missouri Tigers, nine. We'll be back after we pause for this timeout. This is Syracuse Football 86.